good evening to one and all can you all just confirm if i am audible to you all today we will be doing the company law marathon and i will be giving you all tips on how you can clear this exam with a piece of cake you will find it very very simple there are some strategies and some tips that you need to remember before you can uh, attempt this particular examination of company law okay now company law is the core subject for a company secretary so i believe this subject will be your favorite subject the most interesting and also the most loved it is vast but we love the more vast it is the more we get to read and we get to know it there are certain techniques and certain tips and insights which i will share with you cool so let's first begin and understand the structure of the company law paper how it's going to come now your company law it has a three divisions you have your part 1 2 3 normally people get confused kaun sa padhna hai people don't know which one to study now from here there are six chapters for 40 marks there are 50 cha for 50 marks you have 14 chapters and you have 10 marks you have three chapters very 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 important tip don't start with part 2 don't start with part 2 reason is very simple you must have already studied it before very very well since it is the most important part if you start with part 2 it is possible that you will never complete and you will only end up studying this part only so what you need to do in the very first strategy you need to start with part 1 and finish off part 1 especially the important chapters then you can finish off part 2 here the the part 3 and then you leave good enough time easily you should leave some 10 hours for your uh, directors chapter you must have studied directors meetings kmp and done that keep it aside you keep good amount time in the last moment jab tum apna padhai immediately chalu karoge now let's see what is the strategy for the day now we will be starting with part a first since it is the most neglected people just invest time in part b only which they must have already done during the past now in company law subject pay attention this is a lot of chapters to finish for 50 marks i will make it very very simple for you first let me tell you how do you score exemptions in company law company law mein score kaise karte hai you you take any rank holders paper कोई भी रैंक होल्डर का पेपर का देखो फर्स्ट इज द वे ऑफ राइटिंग हाउ डू दे एंड अप राइटिंग योर पेपर योर क्वेश्चन पेपर विल हैव टू थिंग्स वन इज योर डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चंस एंड द अदर वन यू विल हैव इज सिचुएशनल क्वेश्चंस सो सिचुएशनल क्वेश्चंस आर वेरी वेरी डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चंस आर वेरी वेरी सिंपल डायरेक्टली यू लर्न तुम्हें डायरेक्टली क्वेश्चन पूछा होगा तुम्हें डायरेक्टली आंसर लिखना है सो दैट इज वेरी वेरी सिंपल नाउ कमिंग टू योर सिचुएशनल क्वेश्चंस बिफोर यू इवन स्टार्ट स्टडिंग यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ टू राइट सिचुएशनल क्वेश्चंस एंड यू हैव टू नो क्योंकि एग्जाम में 110% सिचुएशनल क्वेश्चंस आएंगे सिचुएशनल क्वेश्चंस इज दे विल गिव यू समथिंग लाइक अ a situation x y z director was removed what is to be done etc so the format is very simple moment you get a situational question write down the facts of the case facts of case from the question only directly copy karna chalu karo directly start writing while writing the facts you will read and you will try to remember which chapter is it from and which section it is so then the next step will be to write the provision of law provision of law means the section from it now tell me one thing tum kitna bhi padhai karo people are studying and studying and mugging they don't understand the very first thing that they need to know is the section you have to know the section now how do you know and remember the sections i will be showing you all in this entire marathon 
for every single chapter you will be able to write the section this is my assurance to you i will give this technique to you because tum answer chalu hi kar rahe ho with the provision of law so you need to know the section after the facts you write the provisions directly if you know a similar case law you will write the case law and then you will write the conclusion this is the format for writing a situational question it has to be presented in this way to get maximum marks it looks very very nice situational questions next time never get scared because this is the format you as it is can fill up the facts you can connect it with what chapter it is and which section number will be it and then you give the conclusion whether it is allowed or not allowed etc whatever the conclusion can be simple now this is the first part that you need to know in situational questions because 50 marks of your paper will be situational questions only format should be ready and then whatever knowledge you have you have to put it here the next important thing is what do they ask is drafts they ask you certain drafting questions draft resolution draft a notice draft a letter etc okay this also is easily they come for around 5 marks in your examination whatever you study if you don't know the draft you will not be able to attempt it so how do you get i have made a full video on company law every single draft that has come in the past exam and which can come go on google on youtube and just type company law draft cs executive my video will pop up i have given the full drafting even if you join the telegram or the whatsapp group i will resend the drafting video very very important once you get these two sorted these two sorted pata chal jata hai paper attempt kar payenge from whatever knowledge we have because people make mistakes even after knowledge they can't write now this is the 50 marks is sorted here here the drafting is sorted very very scoring now how to learn the sections i will be giving you on a technique where you will know all the sections okay so these are all your chapters and with me you all have to be till the end i have kept the institute study material which you also have to have in front of you because i'll be doing from the study material in the study material whatever chapter is there whatever chapter is there whichever important sections are there important sections we will write it here in your module you will write it with me so whenever we finish a particular chapter i will write the section number here you have to write it before going for the exam you will memorize it so your start of your paper will be very very good now first we will be starting with part 1 part 2 you already know you will finish fast if you start part 2 now you will never end up finishing only so don't make that mistake let's start we will be starting with introduction to company law we will take around we'll finish this chapter in 30 minutes i will be going really fast since it's simple but very very scoring okay so uh, you can have your institute material or from wherever you have studied i'm going to start with the first part okay and then after the first part the first chapter we will then go to the most important now there are seven chapters which come for around 70 marks your share and share capital 14 marks very 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 important after the first chapter i will be starting with this chapter which is your lesson number 2 in the module and i will finish entire lesson number 2 and all the past exam questions and this will be in your pocket so let's begin okay this is this should be your most favorite and the most entertaining chapter and one more thing i want to show you is a paper pattern this will be your paper pattern remember one thing that all your questions are for 5 marks each 3 marks each 5 marks each 5 marks 4 marks 5 marks so you won't find any question which you have to write for 10 marks 15 marks so you should know how to present it well you should know the section section barabar aana chahiye presentation barabar aana chahiye 
and you should be able to uh, uh, you know underline the main important part learn little bit case laws where you can quote for every chapter now without wasting much time we begin with the first chapter we'll finish it in a uh, half an hour's time okay let's quickly begin so you can open your lesson number 1 in your institute study material we will be finishing it now in half an hour's time okay so let's begin lesson number 1 introduction to company law from the name itself it's a law relating to companies when i say that i have to go back into the background to understand which were the laws governing company law today so today we know that the company law that will be studying is your companies act 2013 the expert of which we will be becoming now before that there was companies act 1956 before that there was companies act 1930 then you have all your companies before this since we were inspired and mainly our company law source was england we had the joint stock company which was by england now uh, this was pre and post independence just the basic thing now remember that your companies act 2013 how many sections are there so there are 29 chapters for uh, 470 sections and seven schedules okay so the companies act uh, 1956 has been trimmed down into smaller parts now in the module in your chapter number 1 they give you a little bit of background legislative background so we'll be doing that as well just little bit and quickly moving ahead now the companies act 1956 was formed by the baba committee now for every important law the government sets up a committee so for 1956 act it was the baba committee but what we have to remember and throughout we have to remember is companies act 2013 was passed under the chairmanship of jj irani committee so many times we can say jj under the jj irani committee the concept of small companies was envisaged was thought was brought in was introduced one person company was introduced envisaged brought in etc now starting with what is a company and the first question that comes in your company law for your past exam questions is what is the difference between a body corporate and a company now the origin of the word company company comes from the lat so we can write in case if they ask what is the difference between company and body corporate it is a past exam question as well many times it has come so company has been derived from the latin word come means coming together and panis means bread so come together and have means together where we used to discuss business now this was a how the origin but in today's time we know company is a business entity where people come together association of person who come to do business now first thing i need to you to remember is the origin of the word company however it doesn't have much significance today we need to know the definition of the word company now first thing take a book and a pen and sit down i will be giving you certain section numbers and going in order so write the section number because 50% of your uh, situation 50% of your paper is situational questions after the facts you have to write the section so you have to learn it and i am showing you how to learn write it down section number 20 section number 2 subsection 20 defines the meaning of the term company company means an entity incorporated under the companies act 2013 or any previous law very very simple so anything registered under the companies act 2013 or company before the previous companies or 1956 1913 we had seen will be termed as a company so reliance industry has not been incorporated under companies act 2013 it is in 1956 act so that will also be treated as a term company 
then what is a body corporate and what is the difference between company and body corporate so body corporate is a entity registered under any act having separate legal existence so a body corporate or a corporation is derived from the latin word corpus so remember this it derived from the latin word corpus which means a body it is a artificial person created under law the definition of that is given under section 2 subsection 11 now understand in short i will first tell you and then i'll quickly move ahead now under section 2 subsection 20 is a definition of company any entity registered under this act is a company section 2 subsection 11 is a body corporate body corporate means registered under any act having separate legal existence means they can by itself it will have a different name a different property different a uh, recognition by law and company is registered under companies act uh, only okay so by this definition can you all message and tell me which is a wider term this is under any act and this is under companies act and companies act also every company has a separate legal existence so the term body corporate is a wider term and then the company so all body all companies are body corporates but all body corporates are not companies all companies are body corporate common sense because a बॉडी कॉपरेट जिस रिक्वायर्स की कोई ना कोई एक्ट में आप रजिस्टर हो और आपका सेपरेट लीगल एक्सिस्टेंस होगा सो दिस एज अ सेपरेट लीगल एक्सिस्टेंस आई गिव यू एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ बॉडी कॉपरेट विच आर नॉट कंपनीज फॉर एग्जाम्पल योर एल एल पी इट इज रजिस्टर्ड अंडर एन एक्ट एल एल पी एक्ट एंड हैविंग सेपरेट लीगल एक्सिस्टेंस अ फॉरिन कंपनी इज अ कंपनी रजिस्टर्ड अंडर फॉरिन लॉज नॉट अंडर इंडियन कंपनी लैक so therefore it is not under indian company law so a foreign company for the purpose of the definition is not a company is a body corporate so quickly this has been a past exam question you can attempt it let's see section 2 sub section 11 says a corporation includes a company so every company is a body corporate okay but does not include specific exclusion to a cooperative society or any other body corporate Uh, which the central government may specify now company and body corporate both have something in common separate legal existence perpetual succession right to sue and be sued all the features of company you can write next here you can see the definition this is your past exam question and you can present it in this way give the meaning difference of company registered under the companies act corporation registered under any act section you can give as a difference company it has to be incorporated in india this can be incorporated in or outside india scope corporation as a wider scope so this in the past has come for 5 marks and we are done with this question moving ahead to the next one is the features of company you must have seen in the past exam questions also they have asked certain questions on features of company chapter number 1 contains that we will be doing first very very simple a company has a corporate personality corporate personality means in the eyes of law company is a separate person company has its own personality different distinct from its members ab mai obviously tumhe i am also saying in a uh, little bit legal language because your paper is there you have to develop the language if you listen to this you only then you will be able to write in hindi if you listen you won't be able to write it in english so that's why i am using the law, language which you have to write in your exam now a company is an artificial person created by law it is different from the persons who make it composite 
therefore it is capable of a co company has its own personality it's a separate legal existence it's a artificial person created by law it can hold property incur debts borrow money sue and be sued etc this is the meaning of corporate personality now from your the most important case i believe you also must be knowing is your solomon versus solomon okay so in the exam they have asked in situational questions about corporate personality you will write facts of the case you will write provision of law and then you will write the similar case law solomon versus solomon if a question of corporate personality comes now solomon versus solomon let's see again how do you write it solomon versus solomon and company limited is a landmark uk company law case so it is a uk company law case now i'll give you the background i believe you must be knowing also the aaron solomon was a leather merchant he had his he was a sole proprietor and he had sons and he had a wife uh with them he made a company a separate company a limited company so what happened let's understand there is solomon and he formed a company solomon limited his business he had a business he had a sole proprietor he was of a leather he was a leather merchant okay business this entire business he sold to the company he sold to the company now obviously once he has sold the company you think solomon will now have rights over the business no now once you sell something the owner the buyer becomes the owner now so solomon limited will become the owner solomon limited will have different shareholders will be completely different from him now he will lose control so obviously to get this business the company will have to pay purchase consideration they will have to give some money for purchasing purchase consideration can anyone message what was the purchase consideration so when he sold the business the business was sold for 39000 pound now this 39000 pound was given to solomon now this 39000 pound had to be given to solomon for buying out his business 39000 pound this was given in cash and it was given in kind also they gave him some amount of cash how much cash they gave him the company gave him 9000 pounds cash 10000 worth debentures and 20000 worth shares till here it is clear so shares of 20000 cash 9000 so cash was 9000 pounds kind was shares and certain debentures certain floating it was secured debentures this was for 20000 and this was was 10000 till here it is clear so to solomon they said give us your business the company said company had different shareholders they gave and they gave him shares they gave him money and they gave him secured debentures now the entire owner is solomon limited it's a separate legal existence a separate company can deal with it without the consent of solomon now solomon limited the company soon ran into difficulty it ran into losses and it start became bankrupt so company went into liquidation moment it went into liquidation during the time of winding up company had only assets of 6000 pounds so 6000 and they owed solomon as he was a debenture 10000 and unsecured creditors of 17000 so let me see what was the case assets were of 6000 pound and liabilities was 17000 pound so will 
the company be able to pay off the liability yes or no can you all message will the company be able to pay the liabilities answer is no so that means kisi ko to loss hoga someone will be at loss so this 17000 liability was 7000 pound approx to unsecured creditors and 10000 pound liability was to solomon for his debentures that he was holding he had secured debentures now tell me one thing this money 6000 pound will go to whom so this entire money can you message to whom it will go it was gone to solomon entirely because he was secured debentures tell me who will get a heart attack message in the chat box who will get a heart attack the unsecured creditors got a shock of their life that they won't get anything in the company so they filed a case that see solomon started the company it was his wife children running the company at the time of winding up why gave him he and the company is same so that time the decision of the came house of lords since it's a uk case is it come here either now listen a company is a separate legal existence company works as per company law first the secured people get and then the unsecured people get so first since he is there a secured person he will be get the money and you will not get so you cannot say that he is a agent or a trustee a company has a separate legal existence separate uh, entity altogether a company was treated uh has its own right has its is different from its owners the company is a different person altogether from the subscribers a shareholder cannot be held liable for the acts of the company even if they hold the entire share capital so this was the solomon versus solomon case now going ahead to the next corporate personality case which was lee versus lee farming now again i will go fast on this lee now in this was a case of new zealand farming in new zealand was done aerial farming that means from the air they used to drop the pesticides etc and the farmers were pilots the farmers were actually pilots because they used to do aerial farming now lee he formed a company now this is a exam past exam case law also so you have to write that as well okay so pay attention to what i am saying i will finish the chapter really fast but these are all exam questions so lee air farming limited lee was the farmer and the pilot he formed a company lee air farming limited lee due to a, a unfortunate incident died in the plane crash okay he died now question came that his wife came for employment employment compensation she said that my husband was working in the company he died while doing farming so please give him compensation so this was a new zealand ka case so new zealand's workman compensation wife wanted to claim this compensation now the question came up that see ultimately lee only was the company he had all except one share almost all the shares he had and lee was the employer because he was only running the company and he appointed lee as the employee so question came up can a employer and employee be the same person because the owner is now asking for employment workman compensation so again the court held they said come here it is not lee who appointed it is not lee who appointed there is a separate legal existence once a company is formed it has its own personality the company has appointed lee so he is not the this the company is the employer and he is the employee he will be entitled to compensation okay now pay attention to the manner in which i have written listen hold back stop exam mein question aaya answer dekho kaise likha hai see how the answer was written the facts of the case 
then the issue involved write what question it is issue involved and then i wrote the decision or head this is the format of writing situational questions this is how you have to present look at this take a screenshot this is how you have to write facts issue involved issue involved just copy what question they are asking and then conclude it in short para situational questions are the most coring because most of the thing you are copying and pasting again okay so be confident now coming to the next case this is also an exam question new horizon versus union of india whether the experience of a shareholder can be treated as the experience of the company okay this was a exam question they did not give you the case they are giving you a situational question they had asked you for the case law name also okay and they had given so whatever i am teaching in chapter number 1 beyond that it won't come because i am covering all the topics okay now in new horizon what it was held that there was a tender evaluation committee so i'll tell you in short i believe you must be knowing so there were a joint venture company was formed so it was a jv of two companies so there was a company a and company b both of them formed a jv ab okay this had experience of 5 years this had experience of 5 years but this was a newly incorporated company newly incorporated company this company applied for a tender a government tender in the government tender it was written that only if you have 5 years of experience only then you can uh, apply for the tender so then the question said ki this is a new company so they said no no these are the shareholders the experience of the shareholder ultimately they are only the joint venture so they could have individually applied he could have applied he could have applied so therefore in this case it was held as the experience of the company can be treated as the ex, uh, of the shareholder can be treated as a experience of the company because the joint venture the ultimate company the amalgamated company would have access to the knowledge to the database to the tools to the employees everything now coming to the next one uh, union of india i know someone saying i will be covering the case laws real quick so i will be touching upon all the case laws but real fast okay these are all past exam questions that's why i'm discussing all union bank of india versus kader international construction limited theek okay? hai whether a company can be treated as a like how we have proper suits proper suit is when a proper suit is when a poor person is filing he cannot he doesn't have money so government helps him and appoints a lawyer for him question was there that whether a company can be treated as a poor person indigent person yes or no can a company be treated as a poor person can doesn't have money and for them the government appoints a lawyer answer is yes it was held that we are talking of person company is also artificial person company can be bankrupt company can be insolvent company's accounts can be frozen so in such case it was held that a company can be treated as a poor in indigent means poor a poor person and can file for a proper suit okay then came bachcha guzdar now this was also a exam question bachcha guzdar versus commissioner of income tax okay in this what it was held whether the dividend received by a agricultural the shareholder when they receive dividend from a agricultural company will that also be exempt from tax they go agricultural income is exempt yes or no we all know that so whenever the agricultural company is making profit that will be exempt but when this company is giving dividend to its shareholders will that be exempt yes or no the government said no that will not be exempt because one time benefit is got this is company giving to the dividend it is taxable ddt is applicable clear till here now limited liability so we know that the company has limited liability 
however limited liability means what it cannot extend to personal assets if i buy a share of reliance power of 10 rupees but the company made a loss of 45000 crores so in such case will not be held i will not have to pay that much i only have to pay till the the up shareholder will only be liable till the unpaid amount on share so we know limited liability could be of two kinds limited by shares or limited by guarantee limited by share is when you have to uh, pay only up till the unpaid amount on share jitna baki hai share ka hi paisa bhar raha hai guarantee mein whatever you guaranteed promise to pay at the time of winding up only that will be your liability beyond that you cannot be held liable however there are exceptions where to the principle of limited liability now this you can remember the heading okay this they can ask you when does a limited liability become unlimited so i have bought shares of 3000 and my liability is 10 lakh rupees how it can happen if i have done fraud if uh, it has been found that a tribunal has ordered or uh, where a company has got incorporated by furnishing false information then you will be held liable in case the winding up appears to be carried on to defraud the creditor if we find that you you did the winding up to fool the creditors you will be held liable in case a company is incorporated only as a unlimited company now there are options for a company to be incorporated as a unlimited company power is given but it is very unlikely next so this was the exam question so we have done it before now perpetual succession they had asked this kind of a question that all the shareholders have died in a bomb blast and uh, they give you all different different thing the shareholders died in a bomb blast sometimes they say they died in a plane crash sometimes they say they died in a car, car crash etc so they are all asking you to explain okay so uh, we are talking about perpetual succession perpetual succession means the company the company never dies its its existence is not dependent on the existence of its members one a uh, members may come and go but the company lives on forever they give you a statement like this and tell you to explain okay so you can write an incorporated company never dies except when it is wound up so company is formed by legal means through a legal procedure it can be wound up only through a legal procedure now moving ahead to the next one another important this is how they had framed it and how do you have to write the answer okay now in a annual general meeting all the shareholders were killed in a bomb blast whether the company is still in existence now this was a exam question for four marks now all of you all get confident we know we know but the presentation is more important so this is how you can present it you will write the concept of perpetual succession means that the membership of the company may be keep changing from time to time but does not affect the company's continuity a company being a separate legal existence is unaffected by the death or the departure of any of its members and remains the same entity despite the total change in membership so thoda english likhna padega high level english you need to write okay so even my english is not very good but i always make a effort to improve mai hamesha effort dalta hu to improve next then you say that the death only on winding up of a company so once you explain the concept of perpetual succession then say that how you can kill a company you can kill a company through a legal procedure except by a winding up procedure change in membership doesn't affect the change in membership doesn't affect the existence of the company okay and then you can quote mr grover okay who grover professor grover he said that the, he made these famous lines members may come and go but the company goes on forever during the, he said at a time when during a war all the members of one private company uh, were killed in a bomb blast but the company survived not even a hydrogen bomb could have destroyed it clear till you so this is how you quote then you say company has a separate property that's fine 
ट्रांसफरबिलिटी ऑफ शेयर द शेयर आर ट्रांसफरेबल प्राइवेट कंपनी कैन बी ऑफ शेयर ऑफ अ प्राइवेट कंपनी देर इज अ रिस्ट्रिक्शन ऑन ट्रांसफर ऑफ शेयर वेर एज फॉर पब्लिक कंपनी यू इट इज फ्रीली ट्रांसफरबल सेक्शन फोर्टी फोर सेज दट द शेयर ऑफ अ कंपनी आर मूवेबल एंड ट्रांसफरेबल रिमेंबर दिस ओके नेक्स्ट कॉमन सील अगेन टू थ्री टाइम्स दे हैव आस्ट दिस पास्ट एग्जाम क्वेश्चन सो इट हैज आस्ट टू थ्री टाइम्स इट हैज बीन अ एग्जाम क्वेश्चन कैन यू ऑल मैसेज इन द चैट बॉक्स दैट इन द चैट बॉक्स कैन यू ऑल मैसेज डज अ कंपनी नीड टू हैव अ कॉमन सील टूडे पास्ट एग्जाम क्वेश्चन आई वॉन्ट टू सी हाउ मेनी ऑफ यूल गेट इट राइट डू कंपनीज रिक्वायर अ कॉमन सील शेयर सर्टिफिकेट पे कॉमन सील लगता है यू नो ऑल दोस्ट दैट स्टैम्पिंग इज इट नीडेड ये सो नो सो फर्स्ट एक्सप्लेन फर्स्ट एक्सप्लेन द मीनिंग ऑफ कॉमन सील कॉमन सील मीन द ऑफिशियल सिग्नेचर ऑफ द कंपनी सिंस द कंपनी हैज नो फिजिकल एक्सिस्टेंस इट हैज टू एक्ट थ्रू इट्स एजेंट द नेम ऑफ द कंपनी मस्ट बी एनग्रेव ऑन द कॉमन सील अ रबर स्टैम्प डज इन सर्व द पर्पज अ डॉक्यूमेंट नॉट बेरिंग द कॉमन सील or was that then now once you write what is the meaning of common seal then write that as per companies amendment act 2015 common seal became optional the companies act requires common seal to be affixed on certain documents the common seal is no more mandatory all the documents which re require affixing the common seal may now be signed by two directors or one director and a company secretary of the company now see this and so company secretary signature is needed for a document to be authenticated if the common seal is not there okay so this is a past exam question and legal recognition given to company secretaries abhi iska section ka likha hai kahan pe aisa optional bana hai where it is given so remember that Section two, subsection sixty-two. Now, when we are doing chapter one, finish it with me so that you don't have to study, uh, study it again. Okay. Section two, section forty-six. You will quote. Section two says that a company may, by writing under its common seal, if any. So they added this word, if any. If common seal is there, affix it. But if the common seal is not there, then provided in case where the company does not have a common seal, authorization under subsection two shall be made by two directors and a company secretary, or by a director and a company secretary. This is an important line. Even share certificates, do they need to have common seal? This has got a practical question also. Common seal lagana hai kya? Kisko sign karna hai share certificate pe? So it was said if it hai to thik hai, nahi hoga to. two directors or a director and a company secretary need to affix it so section 2 subsection 22 so this is how the past exam question was common seal has to be affixed on all the letters and documents answer is this statement is not correct give the provision of law okay and then conclude so section 2 subsection 2 you will write that they inserted the word if any to fix a common seal okay and section 46 also said that uh, you don't need a common seal on share certificates anymore yes so the more no see uh, understand one thing the impression will be set when you write the section right and i'm going to show you how to write so don't worry uh, capacity to and sue and be sued a company can sue and be sued you know that distinction between partner company and partnership firm then a company in huf you can do this very very simple then the next important question that comes is your lifting of corporate veil explain the lifting of corporate veil let's understand what it is important past exam question past exam question as well first these are the members and these are the company as per the rule of corporate personality as per the rule of corporate personality a company and its members have a separation the members are different from its uh, a 
members are different from the company they have the company has a separate legal existence there lies a partition between them matlab company ki property alag company's property is different company's taxes are different company's um, uh, you know suing is different and individual person members are different this between them lies a partition common will corporate will a parda a partition a separation between them now whenever the company the corporate personality concept is misused then we have to lift the corporate veil ye hatana padega partition to see who are the wrong doers behind it is also called as the piercing the corporate veil breaking the corporate shell why like that because pata to chale we should come to know who did the wrong can you put the company in jail if there is a fraud can you put the company in jail no you have to see who was working behind the company and accordingly punish them so corporate will learn the lines with me now lifting of corporate will or piercing the corporate will in the eyes of law a company is different from its members company has a separate legal existence as we saw in solomon versus solomon uh, in reality we say that they are different but in reality a association of person like the board of directors persons in control are conducting the operations of the company now this we have given for statutory privilege ye ek privilege diya hua hai ki you can work differently that uh, it's easy for company to have its property to do the working so this is a privilege given to do uh, business lawfully however whenever there is a dishonest misuse uh, of this wheel then the courts will break through the corporate shell lift the corporate wheel to see and pull off the mask to see who is really behind and accordingly punish them okay this concept is called as lifting of corporate veil now lifting of corporate veil uh, we have certain case law judicial pronouncement i will go fast but i will just discuss it protection of tax and revenue pay attention okay kabhi hum log bolenge bhai company ke piche kon hai kisne galat kiya usko jail mein dalo so who is the wrong doer behind the company put him in jail so we have to lift the corporate veil whenever there is a tax evasion company itself cannot do tax evasion we have to find who did the tax evasion there was this case of dinshot manaji pet where he was a high wealthy man hni he was earning good income he set up four companies to split his income so that he can evade the super tax jo usko lag raha tha जो सरचार्ज टाइप उसको लग रहा था ही सेट कि मेरी इनकम को चार में स्प्लिट कर देता हूं तो कम दिखेगी इट विल लुक लेस सो इन दैट केस इट वाज हेल्ड एट द कंपनी दैट ही हैड फॉर्म वाज सिंपली टू अवॉइड टैक्स इट हैड नो रियल बिजनेस ऑफ एनी बिजनेस द ओनली पर्पस ही हैड क्रिएटेड वाज टू डिवाइड हिज इनकम नाउ फ्रॉड सेकंड इन व्हाट केस वी विल लिफ्ट द कॉर्पोरेट वील fraud in cases of fraud the companies lift the corporate veil two classic cases are given gilford motor versus horn now what happened is horn was an employee horn was a employee was a former employee in gilford motor so this was the company employer and he was the employee both had a employment contract that horn will not solicit the clients of the company when he leaves the company matlab wo kam ye jo gilford motor company mein where he was working he will not take away the clients once he leaves the company we have non compete clause kafi sab employees ko bolte bhai hamare customer leke mat jana so what did horn do he left the company set up a new company he set up a new company and he started soliciting the clients of gilford motor he started enticing he started giving service to the clients of gilford motor so gilford motor filed a case on this company saying that he told the court lift the corporate veil see he, it is horn only who is behind and his main objective is breach of contract and this entire company is a is just a shield to do something wrong so the courts did not allow it 
सेम वॉज इन लिपमिन जोन्स वर्सेज लिपमिन ही हैड कॉन्ट्रैक्टेड अ हाउस टू सेल मिस्टर लिपमिन कॉन्ट्रैक्टेड अ हाउस टू सेल टू मिस्टर जोन्स देर आफ्टर ही चेंज दिज माइंड टू अवॉइड एन ऑर्डर ऑफ स्पेसिफिक परफॉर्मेंस ही ट्रांसफर द प्रॉपर्टी टू द कंपनी मतलब लिपमिन वॉज द सेलर he entered into a contract to sell it to jones but he didn't want to sell so what he did he made a company and lipman was only the owner and this property he gave it to the company only then he told jones sorry i have already sold it so then mr jones filed a case in court saying that see this guy transferred the property and the company is also his only so lift the corporate veil that he just doing it to evade his uh, obligation is duty so court held that it was wrong then to judge the enemy nature of the company sometimes to see it could be a indian company but it would be run by enemies so in this case dalmer versus uh, continental tire company conten continental tire company was incorporated in england but was real owners were germans so this company was there a continental rubber tire company was incorporated in england but actually it was run by germans so england you think england will allow such company to function in england yes or no so then in matter went in court court said that see listen this company is incorporated in england but we have to lift the corporate veil to see that who are the people running it behind and it was the enemies so we will never allow such companies and give any protection to them okay and the judge said that it would be a blatant uh, violation of public policy if we allowed such company to function okay so these were same in corner versus corners also you can quote all these cases which i am telling you moving ahead now all this similar part, parts then avoidance of welfare now this was a past exam question pay attention okay now workmen employed in associated rubber industries limited versus associated associated rubber industries limited market is important so what happened is in this company anyone knows and please see the manner in which i am writing the case laws we write the case name we write the facts we write the issue involved and then we write the decision so the facts was of this case that uh, this company had told the workmen this was against the workmen only so the workmen filed the case on the company on this company moment there was more profit or bonus dene ka time aa raha tha whenever the company realized that they would get good money they, uh, they they had made profit and they would have to give bonus to the workmen so they we used to divert the funds to another company and make payments so that there used to be no money left for giving bonus so the workmen filed the case and the court held that you cannot divert the funds the sole purpose of giving the money was to evade this bonus okay a new company was created wholly with no assets only so that uh, purpose of splitting the profits into two so that they would reduce the obligation to pay the bonus supreme court held as a new company was formed as a device to reduce the gross profits and thereby reduce the bonus to the workmen it was held that it was wrong then comes is company a citizen of india so answer is a company can be considered as a good corporate citizen but for the def, for the purpose of citizenship act only a natural person can be a citizen only a natural person can go and vote ठीक है ओनली अ नेचुरल पर्सन कैन गो एन वोट सो इज अ कंपनी सिटीजन आंसर इज नो कंपनी कैन हैव अ डोमिसाइल येस और नो कैन अ कंपनी हैव अ डोमिसाइल कैन अ कंपनी हैव अ नेशनैलिटी डोमिसाइल इज अ प्लेस ऑफ बिजनेस डोमिसाइल भी हो सकता है कंपनी कैन हैव अ नेशनैलिटी इट कैन हैव अ डोमिसाइल इट कैन हैव अ रेसिडेंस but it cannot be considered as a citizen clear so this was the case then this now this what i'm telling you is very very important okay this is being past exam question i want you to remember the case laws also for this 
as much as you can okay so it is important and past exam question now state trading corporation versus cto the supreme court held that though a legal person was not a citizen and can act only through natural person so you just remember these case laws write it down something which you can quote in the exam tomorrow then comes rc cooper versus union of india in this it was held that whether a company can be considered as a citizen for the purpose of filing a uh, fundamental rights writ petition can a company file a uh, writ petition if its fundamental rights are violated yes or no put it in the chat box quickly this is a past exam question can a company file a writ petition so it was held that yes because the company ultimately was held by indian shareholders so if the company's rights are violated the shareholders rights are violated and since the shareholders are indian citizens the fundamental rights are being violated okay so in this 25th amendment curtail the right to property acquisition it further held that where the legislative measures directly affect a company or shareholder can petition on behalf of the company okay the court entertained the petition under uh, under article 32 at the instance of a director it was held at the individual rights now this is the main line individual rights are not lost by reasons of the fact that he is a shareholder of the company means even the company could have filed a writ petition uh, in benet coleman versus union of india again the reason is the shareholders rights are equally and necessarily affected if the rights of the company are affected now this is the line what i was talking to you which has come in the exam it is now clear that the fundamental rights of the shareholders and the citizens are not lost when they associate to form a company okay so this is just a show of court okay so now we go to see uh, the types of company now types of company uh, they have given just quickly we'll go i believe you must be knowing also section 3 subsection 1 says in india the companies are divided into three classes private company public company and one person company section 3 subsection 1 define now public company private and opc for public company you require seven and more for private company required two or more and for one person company you require one person as its member once you have section 3 subsection 1 section 3 subsection 2 says that company all the three classes of company could be limited companies or unlimited companies could be limited company or unlimited company so they had asked the question in the past exam that can a opc have unlimited liability can a opc have a one li unlimited liability so you will write as per section 3 okay then comes uh, as per section 3 sub section 1 they have given you the classes and sub section 2 gives you that they could all be limited or unlimited companies next if we go to see private company the definition so we are going to see all the three definitions and uh, for private public and opc private company section 2 sub section 68 what is the meaning of the term private company private company restricts its transfer of shares prohibits invitation to public and limits its members to 200 limits its members to 200 restricts the transfer of shares and prohibits invitation to public now this is a past exam question noted that while computing this maximum maximum number of shareholders which is 200 which is 200 these should not be counted joint holders shall be counted as one and employees counting as shareholders should not be counted in the limit of 200 persons formally in employment who were members during such employment and still continue to be the member shall not be included in the limit of 200 so this is a past exam question
that they had given that there were three there were so many employees also counted so will that employees be counted in the number of while computing 200 answer is no so there were let's say uh, 200 members already and there were 10 uh, employees of the company as members so is it a violation of the private company regulations answer is no clear till here for a very simple reason there are 200 maximum limit but employees are not to be counted in the limit of 200 then one person company means you have one person as one member as its person section 2 subsection 62 okay then they said uh, some rules for private company so a private company cannot sell its shares to public it will be deemed public company so private company can privately place to individuals not to the public at large so individually they go they make a share transfer form with that individual you can so section 3 sub uh, 1c says that one person company can be formed for a lawful purpose so a one person company will be treated as a private company one a one person company can be a limited by shares can be limited by guarantee and can be unlimited companies also public company very very simple what is not a private company what is not a private company is a public company second a now pay attention to a public company okay so when you have a public company and it is the holding company and the subsidiary is a private company this company will be treated as a deemed public company deemed public company because ultimately public ka hi paisa idhar laga hua hai so a private company which holding whose holding company is a public company then that private company will be treated as a public company only okay so this is it then comes which corporations are state so the definition article 12 says the definition of state government what do you mean by state government parliament or uh, state government all the authorities anything which comes under the control direction funding monitoring duties of the government will be considered to be a state and if it is a state then you can file cases on that particular state and the state government will have to okay the international airport authority was held as other authority under the article 12 so this was given here you know other authority is given so the air international airport authority was considered to be a part of the state then in this case in the rajasthan electric board versus uh, mohan lal the Rajasthan constituted the Electricity Supply Act and was held to be a other authority. So we see all these electric authorities which give electricity to us is under the direct control of government. So it will be considered to be a state. Clear till here. Now coming to the next one. Some agencies under the MCA. Agencies under the government. Very very simple. First one, Registrar of Companies. defined under section 2 subsection or uh, 22 all the corporate communications are done to the roc it is respond all the filings etc are done to the roc roc has a power to uh, form laws have a power to take some punitive action have a right to take uh, inspection can strike off companies etc now rd now if you go to see the ministry of corporate affairs is there below that we have the regional director and below that we have the roc so regional director governs many many rocs and there are in companies that they have given certain rights which will be exercised by the roc official liquidator is there appointed to wind up companies sell off the assets collect the money etc then we have cfo very very important it's a office which will look into the serious frauds which we will see i think it comes later in the part of the chapters also so cfo is a office created to in, uh, investigate into serious offenses the government will initiate actions 
if they receive a complaint nafra again very important in accounts chapter nafra is a accounting body which uh, recommends accounting policies and auditing policies to the central government they can it's all related to accounting financial reporting making standards overseeing the quality of work of chartered accountants and performing such other duties that the government will give they will monitor and enforce the compliance with accounting standards then comes nclt and nclat so these are both tribunals so matter first goes to nclt section 408 nclt it goes and from appeal it goes into nclat so this is just general stuff so we are done with chapter number 1 completely with all the case laws and the past exam questions also now i want you to tell me the important sections here so section 2 subsection 20 remember it was re regarding what quickly regarding company section 2 subsection 11 it was regarding what body corporate section 22 it was regarding common seal common seal is now not required so i believe in the first chapter these many sections are more than enough maybe you can remember for section 2 subsection 62 68 and 71 so these are three important sections you can write it down six uh, section 2 subsection 62 is opc this is private company and this is public company so in your exam as far as possible quote this very general there will be a question you can write it clear till you now we are going to do start with chapter number 2 your share and share capital the most important the most scoring chapter okay like this till the very end i will write for all the chapters and that's how you will remember for all the sections and you will be able to start well कॉन्फिडेंस भी आता है ना ये सब उसका लिखा होना चाहिए ठीक है लेट्स गो टू द नेक्स्ट वन चैप्टर नंबर टू प्लीज पिक अप योर मॉड्यूल चैप्टर नंबर टू वी विल बी गोइंग ओके लेसन वन इज कंप्लीटेड ओके सो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद लेसन नंबर टू शेयर एंड शेयर कैपिटल ऑफ द कंपनी ओके नाउ जिस स्टार्ट बिफोर स्टार्टिंग वील जिस टेक अप Five ten minutes break. So we'll just take a ten uh, minute break before we start with this chapter, and I'll finish it off in one go. Okay, very simple. Hai. So we'll take a fifteen minute break, fifteen minute, and then we will finish the most important, highly weighted, most vast chapter, including the past exam questions. Or uh, uh, is your chapter number two? Okay, so just a small breather. Revise whatever you want. also on youtube just search company law drafts or drafting under company law cs executive my video will be popping up check that out okay because drafting also comes for 5 marks so 5 minutes and i will come back okay most important chapter just taking a short break you all also can take a breather and come back
हेलो हाय गाइस एम आई ऑडिबल टू ऑल लेट्स क्विकली बिगिन विद दिस चैप्टर एंड फिनिश इट आल्सो वेरी वेरी सिंपल एंड इजी चैप्टर ओके एंड आल्सो आई वांट यू ऑल टू कीप अ बुक एंड अ पेन विद यू वेयर यू राइट डाउन द सेक्शन नंबर्स अलोंग विद द टॉपिक्स क्विकली और मार्केट इन योर मॉड्यूल ओनली बिकॉज यू हैव टू कोट द सेक्शंस इन योर पेपर ओके सो आई एम स्टार्टिंग नाउ okay great hi so now we'll be starting the biggest chapter of your entire company or module your share and share capital this chapter is divided into five parts into five parts one talks about the shares and share capital the second talks about issue and uh, allotment third talks about issue of securities fourth talks about alteration buyback reduction of share capital and the fifth one talks about transfer and transmission transferability of shares this from this chapter what i will be doing is a confirmed sure shot exam questions from you so better learn the sections i will be giving you all the sections list also that you need to do first let's begin okay classification of share capital we know in the company there are shares and when you combine all the shares it's called as your share capital now share capital there are different ways paid up share capital authorized share capital issued capital let's understand the difference between them so this is also important and past exam question as well so if i break it down into this i need your help here okay first which is the largest form of capital which is the largest form of capital is your authorized share capital it is also called as your registered capital for example if the you have been permitted this is the maximum amount that you can raise for example if you are allowed to raise 100 lakhs if we allow you to raise 100 lakhs do you think you will go necessarily company will go and use that power for example all of us we get a uh, a message from the bank that your credit limit is so much 30 lakhs so will you go and borrow 30 lakhs yes or no answer is no it's a right given but you don't want to exercise the right so from that from this authorized capital the biggest one so first is the authorized nominal or registered capital this is the maximum amount a company can borrow then if i give you that you can take a loan of 10000 crores or 1 crore you will not take maybe company even if they get a right they might want to issue a little less so the issued capital is what has been offered to public so what the company is ready to sell so company might want to sell shares worth 80 lakh rupees possible yes or no now if i'm selling something to you is it necessary that everyone will buy if i'm saying that i'm selling this is it necessary everyone will buy no so the subscribed capital subscribed capital is what people have subscribed have agreed to buy this subscribed capital if you remember the minimum paid up the minimum subscription is 90% minimum what you have issued 90% people should subscribe otherwise it gets refunded etc you are selling nobody is buying only so if you are selling let's say 75 lakhs people have subscribed okay 75 lakhs people have subscribed to buy now if everyone has subscribed let's say you all have subscribed is it necessary that the company has to call all the money in the very beginning answer is no so then once you have subscribed you are ready to buy then comes called up capital 
company must have called as and when they need maybe they have called up only 50 lakhs from that 50 lakhs if i have called there might be some people who must have paid so that would be become the paid up capital let's say 40 lakhs so can you tell me if I go and see in the company's pocket, in the company's account, which money must have actually been realized, which many times they refer in the company law, entire time you read, they refer to this capital many times, which is the capital which has really hit the bank account. That is your paid up capital because this much people have paid up. What will not be paid, then we will have to give them letter, reminders, calls, etc. If they listen well and good, otherwise we will have to forfeit their shares, etc. So this is the graph and now let's see. This is how they go. Nominal capital is a maximum. Then the issue is what the company has issued from time to time. It is up to the company. Then what we have issued, it is people to subscribe. So that portion of the part which has been taken up by the people is called as subscribe. If I go below. Even if people have subscribed, it's not necessary I must have called. So how much I must have called and people must have paid up. That's it. The hierarchy gets over. Then they are saying that shares in the company, shares as we know, how many classes of shares can be there in a company? Please put in the chat box and also put the section number. Which section number says and how many classes of shares are there in the company? How many classes of shares are there? There are only two classes of shares. One is equity shares and the other one is preference shares. Where it is written this part? It is written under your section number 43. Equity shares are those shares which are not preference. So preference are those shares which have a preference over equity in terms of winding up and at the time of payment of dividend. Two things. Now equity can further be divided into equity shares having same voting rights or differential voting rights, DVRs, differential voting rights. Means normally here you get one share, one vote, one share, one vote. Here you will get one share, three votes. So this is a DVR, a differential voting rights. Till here it is clear. In the exam, in the past, they have asked, write a short note on what are the conditions for issue of DVR. Go and check Tata Motors have issued DVR, the, uh, you know, these differential voting rights. So first they have given you the definition. Classification is given under section 43. All this section I will ask you once I'm done with the chapter. When we are making a note, we will show off in the exam. Next, coming to this... Uh, Share capital, we know the meaning of share. Share is a share in the share capital of the company. This is section number 2, subsection 84. Nature of share. So section number 44, we had done before. Remember, it is movable and transferable. Types of share capital, it is, you know, preference shares and equity shares. This is, doesn't come in the exam. But quickly, I'll still discuss section number 43 says preference shares. You have a preferential right over equity in case of payment of dividend and the time of winding up. Now, types of preference shares again, not important from exam point of view, but I'll quickly tell you cumulative comes from the word accumulated, comes from the word accumulate. Means, agar dividend nahi diya hai. So, wo accumulate ho jayega, balance mein chal jayega, next year when the company has profit, they will give you. So, accumulative preference shares is if for some reason company did not have profit in a particular year. So, that is will be accumulated and in the next year when we have ex surplus profit, we will say last time you had to give 10, you didn't give 10 dividend. This time you have to give 10 dividend, so give me 20. So cumulative preference shares are there, non-cumulative which does not accumulate. Convertible which can be converted into equity, non-convertible which cannot be converted. Okay. Then uh, comes participating. They participate in surplus profit. So whenever the company after distributing the dividend still has surplus profit, then it will be given to the participating preference shares. Non-participating cannot participate in the surplus profit 
देन कम्स रिडीमेबल एंड नॉन रिडीमेबल प्रेफरेंसेस रिडीमेबल लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड द मीनिंग ऑफ रिडीमेबल फर्स्ट रिडीम मींस टू रीपे ऑन अ फिक्स डेट ऑन अ डेफिनेट डेट नॉन रिडीमेबल मींस टू रीपे ऑन अ नॉन फिक्स डेट देयर इज नो सर्टेनटी व्हेन इट विल बी गिवन सो नॉन रिडीमेबल इ रिडीमेबल प्रेफरेंसेस डू नॉट हैव एनी मैच्योरिटी पीरियड and cannot be issued as per section number 55 redeemable means it will be repaid on a certain tenure so only redeemable preference shares can be issued that to the maturity date should not exceed 20 years but if it is a infrastructure company then it can be more because infrastructure projects take long time it is 30 years now section number 55 i'll give you the sequence of sections also so it talks about preference shares then equity shares i told you equity shares section number 43 so we are only talking about section 43 only till now okay now this is just one interesting thing like uh every member shall have a right to vote on every resolution placed before it so divide into voting rights and deferential voting rights till here it is clear section 43 only we were doing now we'll be doing the second part of the chapter which is of concept of issue and allotment first issue of securities one very important section you have to write section number 23 see this 23-1 and 23-2. What does it say? First, section 23 deals with issue of securities. A private company, what it can issue, and a public company, what it can issue. So, a public company can make a public issue IPO. Here it is given. Can make a public issue. Can do a private placement and can do right issue and bonus shares also. Whereas public company public company can do private placement and right issue and bonus it cannot go to the public so for private company they have given here okay section number 23 subsection 2 a private company may issue right issue bonus shares and private placement but they cannot go to the public common sense okay till here we are done now we are coming to the definition of security so remember 43 we did equity preference and dvrs Then 23 we did what they can issue of securities, what public can issue and what private can issue. Now coming to securities, the definition of security is given under section two, subsection 81 of Companies Act. Can anyone tell me what is the section number for shares? Shares are given under section two, subsection 84. This is section number two, subsection 81, securities, which is a wider term. so a share a uh, securities is a wider term it includes shares but it also includes debentures de uh, derivatives preference shares anything whichever you know mutual fund unit cis unit any kind of financial instrument instrument is coming under definition of security till here it is clear so section 2h of the scra act says security includes so all these things are included including share so security is a wider term than share till here it is clear moving ahead government securities everything comes here now coming to very 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 important part it has been a part of your exam question also it is your prospectus prospectus super super important confirmed it will come and the section you should know section 2 sub section 70 section 2 sub section 70 i want you to quote i towards after the chapter is over i will ask you you have to take a book and pen and write okay and i'll see if you can write or no i know it i'll ask you you have to put in the chat box now what is a prospectus a prospectus is a document by which a company issues its security to the public common sense the college mein jaate prospectus milta hai waise hi company and public so company they issue 
to issue the securities they give a prospectus now prospectus definition given under two subsection 70 it says any document any document and including red earring and uh, under section 32 and self prospectus under section 31 both are important ye dono hi words baad mein dekhenge what is self and red earring uh, and in inviting offers from public is called as a public issue is called as a prospectus so prospectus is a document by which you make an invitation to public it includes shelf and red earring prospectus so prospectus includes a red earring and shelf prospectus we'll see what they are now very 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 important past exam question also what is a shelf prospectus so how do how do you have to write section 2 subsection 70 says that prospect is a document by which you make an issue to the public it includes shelf and red earring shelf prospectus means what can anyone write in the it has come in the past exam question that's why i'm stressing i want you to put in the chat box what define shelf prospectus define the word shelf prospectus what do you mean by a shelf prospectus Quickly, I'm waiting. So, if I have to put it, a shelf prospectus is a prospectus for multiple issues. For multiple issues. So, normally, a public company which wants to make multiple issues in a short span. So every time they have to issue prospectus, draft prospectus, get approval from ROC, SEBI. So they will say what nonsense they are. Again and again I have to do. Very, very good. Single prospectus for multiple issues. Very good. So what they are saying for in a short span, I am going to make multiple issues. Very difficult for me to every time get approval. So I will file a shell prospectus. I will tell the ROC, you take this prospectus within now one year validity can be one year maximum within one year i will come out with multiple issues so every time i go for a public issue during the validity period i don't have to file a prospectus again i will say you have that multiple you have the shelf go to the shelf and check it out but i just have to file a information memorandum so that the roc comes to know how many times did i go okay so quickly a shelf prospectus is a prospectus for multiple issues okay here with this prospectus i can go to the public multiple times during the validity period without again and again filing and getting approval for a new prospectus now sebi will say which all companies are there may file shelf prospectus such prospectus is submitted at the stage of the first offer very important that First time only when I am going, I will have to find a shelf prospectus. So, I will tell the ROC that I am making issue kar raho. I am making multiple issues. You, this is the shelf prospectus. From the first issue, my time of one year will start. See here. The, you get a period not exceeding one year. The validity period shall commence from the date of opening the first offer. Clear till here? And every time I go, I have to file an information memorandum which will be in PAS 2. In PAS 2 will be your information memorandum. Very good. Clear? So, every time I make up a, you know, issue, I have to at least inform them. I don't have to take any approval. Inform karke chale jayega. Shell prospect is clear? Now, next, and can you write in the chat box which section was shell prospect is? 31 or 32 see here in the definition so including a red earring prospectus referred under 32 shelf was under section 31 so this is your section number 31 red earring prospectus is under section number 32 now what is a red earring prospectus a red earring prospectus is a prospectus which does not contain the complete details of the price or the quantum of issue. Sari details nahi deta hu mein. The main purpose I give is to get quotations from people, get bids from people. 
so it is a marketing strategy red earring prospectus so let's understand what happens this when i get confused see when you are going to price pricing and you don't know what to price so if you know fixed price method if i know what price i want to keep i will file a prospectus but if i don't know the price then i will file a rhp red earring prospectus in red earring prospectus price is not given this contains a price this doesn't contain a price it contains a price band a range upper band lower band where people will do bidding and on basis of the bidding i will determine the price on basis of market demand till here it is clear i will determine the price on the basis of the market demand so a prospectus which does not include the complete details of the price or the quantum is called as red earring prospectus in simple words so shelf prospectus ke benefits kya hote hain every time i go for public issue i would have to get approval for roc for the prospectus jo bahut time lagta hai see understand agar ek bar public issue karta if i go to the roc if i'm going to the public i have to take approval every time dekho ye prospect is draft prospect is hoga it they will check it then they will give it to me it is a very lengthy process so with help of shelf prospect is i can come out with a public issue in a faster manner that is all it saves your time and it saves your money because time is money clear till here now red earring prospect is we saw it has a price band on basis of the bidding i come to know the price and then i fix the price according to that now coming to offer for sale deem prospect is it is in your section 25 okay now understand what is the deem prospect is prospect is if it is there okay if a prospect is is there all the rules of prospect is apply section number 26 of the companies act states certain information that has to be there in the prospectus so just if you check about section 26 says the matters to be contained in the prospectus to wo sab matters hote to people come to know ki kya hai prospectus what all is the information about the background of the company etc so prospectus serves as a purpose of informing the shareholder of the investors of about the company now what happens understand with the concept of offer for sale this is not very important so i'll go fast if the company goes to the public it goes to the public theek hai company public ke paas mein gayi so prospect is issue karna padega so they will have to the document by which they go is called as prospectus so people come to know the public will come to know get informed but if the company what it does is they issue to a private person they issue to this intermediary isko issue kar diya and he then makes a offer for sale offer for sale matlab his shares are then being sold to the public so company gave it to this guy maybe this intermediary could be anyone company gave it to a person who will further give it to the public so can i say prospectus is not required now or prospectus is required quickly tell me prospectus is required or not required <clears throat> obviously prospectus is required because you are going to the public right this document document will be deemed prospectus will be a deemed prospectus clear till here the document by which the offer for sale is made by the intermediary to the public is a deemed prospectus okay so these are the rules you can read it up so a company allots to a person to allots to any securities with a view to all of them being offered to public see where 
a company allots any securities company allots any securities with a view to those securities being offered to public so i offered to someone with a view that he will give it to the public so the document by which that sale is made that intermediary makes the sale will be for the purpose deemed to be a prospectus this is section number 25 don't waste too much time not very important now coming to a very 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 important part okay pay attention so we are section number 52 so in chapter i need your help now in chapter 2 of company law we hit section number 43 we hit section number uh 23 26 was about prospectus now we are doing section number 52 53 54 and 55 will come in sequence okay now these will come in sequence 52 talks about issue of shares at premium see section this talks about share premium securities premium account so section 52 talks about issue of securities at premium so if the face value is 10 and i issue at 12 then the two becomes a premium yes or no very very important point from exam point of view multiple times questions have come section number 53 talks about discount this talks about issue of shares at securities at discount 54 says uh, 53 says that you cannot issue at discount except two cases one case has been newly added if it is to your creditors you have given it at discount then it is fine and second is sweat equity now sweat equity is your sweat equity shares and 55 talks about preference shares is this sequence correct is this sequence clear to you yes or no yeah so now quickly i'll move ahead all of this is come in the exam okay section 52 says whenever the company issue shares at premium the premium amount should be transferred to a security premium account the premium will be transferred to security premium account now once that account is there it is called as security premium account where can you use it so the exam question is there in the last attempt only they asked the exam question where can you utilize the security premium account so security premium account can be utilized only for the following five purposes you can with that premium amount you can issue bonus shares you can write off certain preliminary expenses you can write off certain discount paid or commission uh you can for providing premium on redemption for redeemable preference shares and for buyback so security premium account can be used only for these five purposes which are the five purposes buyback preference shares then comes preliminary expenses bonus shares or uh, writing off or debentures issuing them at discount all these purposes only it cannot be used for any other place now coming to section number 53 again it is a past exam question as well section number 53 says issue is of shares at discount today you cannot issue shares at discount see except sweat equity shares a company shall not issue shares so they can issue debentures they can't issue shares because the word written is shares at discount any share issued by the company at a discount shall be void okay this is a new point that however if you want to issue at discount to creditors out of a resolution plan it is allowed then comes we did now sweat equity is also there that's in section 60 54 i think they bring it on later on 
Now we'll start with section number 39, allotment of shares. Okay, this is done. Then we come to section 39. Section 39, that's allotment of shares. Okay, concept of allotment of shares, section 39. Firstly, what do you mean by allotment? So, allotment happens once a share can be allotted once or it can be allotted multiple times. So, let me explain. When a company is there, it has issued the shares to the public. To the public, okay? So, the year the public will make payment of consideration, public paise degi. Against this money, securities will be allotted. So, allotted is first time. After that, what is there? Then the public, when the share price goes up, the public will sell to other public. This will never be called as allotment. This will be called now as transfer. So, for the first time when the shares are sold to the public, it is called as allotment. Okay. So, allotment means any securities offered to the public shall be made available. And allotment can only be done if the minimum subscription is received. Whenever a company makes a share capital, makes an allotment, it shall file with the registrar a PAS3. Very, very important. We will see all the forms PAS 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Till now, we are seeing PAS3 is return of allotment for securities. 110% it will come in every place. Okay. So, whenever you make an allotment of securities, this will always be there. Okay. That's a return of allotment. The return means details of allotment. So, when we details, there is a lot of price, pe kiya, kab kiya, what is the date. So, all those. Details of allotment will be informed to the ROC in PES 3. We have already completed PES 2. What is PES 2? Please put in the chat box. We have done that. PES 2, it's related to what? Quickly. Information memorandum that was given in your shelf prospectus under section 31. Okay, now when we come to 4 and 5, also we'll see the form numbers quickly moving ahead. Now, this was a past exam question, also. Past exam question. Not all the cases are important, but which are important from exam point of view, I'm discussing that. So, Shri Gopal Lanan versus Calcutta Stock Exchange. So, question came up that whether Forfeiture when the company forfeits someone shares, kisi ne paise nahi diya, forfeit karke reissue kiya. So forfeit karke reissue kiya. Will that be treated as allotment? So I want you to put in the chat box if the company forfeits the shares of an of a shareholder and reissue the same shares, will it be treated as allotment? And yes or no? Because if it is allotment and PS3 has to be fine. So it was held. No. Why? Because understand one thing. On when once the share is sold, you will file PS3 as allotment. Then if they didn't pay, you bring it back. Then again give it. So that birth to ekhi bar hoga na. The birth is called as allotment. So the first time it was issued, then after that it will the reissue is not allotment. So on forfeiture, all that happened was, yeah, the court observed that when a share is forfeited and reissued, there is no allotment. Okay. Such forfeiture at that happened when the right of that particular shareholder disappeared as a unit and it was suspended till it found a new shareholder, but it was already in existence. Now, general principles on allotment market is important. It's a past exam question as well. Okay. Very, very important. Now, allotment, they've given you conditions for allotment. Certain general principles. Okay. So, it's very, very important. 
allotment is done by a proper body and that is the board of directors it should be done within a reasonable time however in your section number 56 it is said that it should be done within 2 months so the share certificate should be issued within 2 months then this allotment should be absolute and unconditional means allotment it with is given then you become the owner then there cannot be ifs and buts it should be communicated because it is when i am allotting to you it is only completed when it has been communicated to you and it is against application money only so when you apply you will give a application money against that application money we will allot allotment should not be in contravention of any other law very very important now we are coming to share certificate share certificate what is it and is share certificate a official document put in the chat box is share certificate a official document it's a past exam question now see share certificate is a certificate which is issued to the member specifying the number of shares held by him so it is a doc document which tells how many shares you own it will have a distinctive number and it will be under the common seal if common seal is not there remember we are done section 46 that a share certificate is issued under the common seal if any if it is not there then by two directors or one director and a company secretary wherever it is needed now coming to share certificate and few points a share certificate is issued under sh1 if you have lost the share certificate then you and you require a duplicate share certificate it will be in sh now you can ask for a duplicate share certificate if your shares certificate has been lost or stolen or uh, destroyed or mutilated in these cases you can ask for a new issue okay so issue of share certificate first let's see a board resolution is passed for duplicate share certificate renewal made only on surrender of old share certificate so if you give the old because if it must be torn you can give it to the shareholder torn or defaced defaced matlab wo surface kharab ho gaya then it can be given back sh1 it shall require the signature company shall not issue any duplicate share certificate in you it is lost or destroyed without prior consent of the board so market is important so if it is lost or destroyed then duplicate share certificate cannot be issued unless a board resolution is passed with that respect clear then coming to the timing of issue of share certificates market is important i believe you must be knowing it section 56 sub section 4 gives the timeline so for the subscribers a memorandum 2 months for allotment in case of issue it is 2 months for transfer transmission share certificate should be issued within 1 month and for debentures it is 6 months so market is important section 56 sub section 4 gives the time limit within which you have to issue a share certificate now significance of share certificate so it is a prima facie that you are the owner of the share certificate your prima facie evidence of title of ownership so this is given the case it gives you documentary evidence and it's a declaration in the name of the person who is who is this a company cannot dispute the amount mentioned in a share certificate already paid so we are doing section 46 uh, then also came 44 okay so lot of sections please keep writing the section whenever you are doing because you have to quote it okay then and whichever is important and coming in the exam only those i am discussing i am not discussing every single thing okay legal effect of a share certificate now understand the legal effect of a share certificate legal effect of a share certificate is it becomes as a estoppel with respect to payment and title estoppel 
means to be stopped to be stopped so company will be stopped from denying the title of the share or that the payment is not done if i hold a share certificate then the world is stopped is stopped from denying that i am not the owner and i am not made the payment prima facie it will always be believed so we have already stated that a share certificate is a prima facie evidence of title it means that the share certificate is a statement by the company that the moment when it was issued the person is the legal owner and he has made the necessary payment to that extent then later the company cannot deny it now coming to the third part there are only five parts to this big little chapter it is now your part c which is your issue of securities now issue of securities we have already done it is your section number 43 a company can have two classes of share capital equity shares or preference shares equity shares could be of two classes one is a same voting rights and the other one is differential voting rights i told you in the examination past examination this is supremely important it has come multiple times in your exam what is dvr so you will write if they ask you a short note on differential voting rights and the conditions to issue dvr as per section 43 read with this is your rw is read with rule 4 company can issue dvr on the following cases can you name any few conditions very simple the company's article should allow company should have passed a ordinary resolution and all these points the maximum number of dvrs shall not exceed 74% now earlier this limit was 26 now this limit if it is written anywhere in your books 26 change it it is 74% understand how much can everybody have differential voting rights answer is no maximum dvrs a company can issue is 74% of the total voting rights and from here till the very end from here till the very end is about default that the company should not have been in default should not have made defaulted in filing annual returns for three financial year should not have defaulted in uh, while paying dividend should not have defaulted in paying any loan should not have defaulted in uh, should not have been penalized by any court or tribunal during the last three years so four points are about default one point is about articles and one point is about ordinary resolution and one is the maximum dvrs that you can issue okay now coming once it is there then you will issue explanatory statement giving all the reasons but the main condition is rule number 4 if you have a book and pen write dvr section 43 read with rule number 4 of the share capital and debenture rules 2014 okay then the procedure again now understand i'll show you a simple little procedure on how to write a little later whenever they give you write a procedure i will give you a shortcut to write a procedure a little later a later part of the chapter any procedure that they ask you in the company law you will be able to write and crack it now coming to preference shares preference shares with section number we've already done section 55 okay see your section number 55 i told you there is a sequence that you have to learn section 55 preference shares so a preference share explain what it is a preference shares maximum tenure is 20 years however for infrastructure companies it is 30 years the redemption can be for up to 30 years provided after the 21st year every 10 10 percent they are redeeming till the 30th year okay matlab normally the maximum maturity date of a preference share is 20 years infrastructure projects since it is long time so redemption can be up till 30 years but from the 21st year 10 10 percent they should start repaying okay 
now uh, <clears throat> once this is done with preference shares then procedure i will give you a short tip ps3 is always there now further issue of capital again very 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 important chapter okay this is your further issue of capital now what is further issue of capital it's your section number 62 now i want you to write this in the book again and again i'm telling you take a book and pen the section numbers only i'm writing once you have it in chapter wise chapter 2 mein ye sare sections hai you can learn and you can write section 62 1a 1b and 1c 62 1a b and c 1a is about right issue right issue are given to the existing shareholders then esops are given to employees and this is private placement or preferential allotment preferential allotment is to selected group of persons to selected group of persons when the company issue it is called as preferential allotment here in all these cases you require a special resolution in all the cases you require a special resolution so whenever company wants to issue equity shares to the existing shareholders they will take a special resolution whenever the company wants to take a issue shares to the employees they will have to take a special resolution and whenever company wants to do a private placement to a selected person who company already knows in advance it is called as preferential allotment now in this there are further points in right issue in right issue what they are saying it is given to the shareholders right so how will you tell the shareholders will you call them up no so you will give a letter of offer to them letter of offer that do you want to buy the shares at discounted price we are offering to you at this is price so they will get a offer period will be 15 minimum 15 days to maximum 30 days time period once you give them the offer they want they can subscribe they can transfer their rights or they can renunciate renunciate means give it up nahi chahiye extra saste mein bhi nahi chahiye tumhara share company is giving shares worth 100 rupees is they are giving for 70 but i have to pay 70 na so if i want i can give it up i can renunciate or i can transfer to someone else for the shares which have not been taken up the board will dispose of those shares till here it is clear so here they have given you the points now just remember for everything you require special resolution but only ordinary resolution will be needed when it is giving esops to a you know private company theek okay? hai so this is the points so mark this as important you have to study this <clears throat> uh renunciation can be done 15 to 30 days you know 15 to 30 days time if they reject then the board will dispose of the shares as and when they deem fit now whenever they ask you the procedure i will give you one tip in which they you can clear all the procedures in one go okay sh7 also we'll see ps3 is always filed for employee stock options then sebi also i believe you must be having employee stock options here you give now understand what is a employee stock option you give to the employees but you tell the employee that employee has to work with the company for a certain period so they put a lock in period during that lock in period the employee has to work with the company if he completes the tenure then he will be eligible to that securities so this is employee stock options means the option given to the employees to subscribe to this shares at a future date abhi nahi de rahe abhi option de rahe if you want you can subscribe you will get at a future date after you have worked with the company clear so then they have to give the details of who you are give to the 
in the board report to the shareholders everything you have to inform who are the share employees at what price are you giving what is the lock in period what are the details terms and condition everything will be informed special resolution has to be taken i told you minimum one year lock in period will be there okay in case if he, if there is a death it will automatically vest in the employee if there is a disability then it will be given this in death it will be given automatically to his legal representative in disability it will be given to his to him on that day and in resignation it will be forfeited whatever payment he has been done it will lapse because he has to work for that much time now a uh, board report will disclose all the details maintain registers under sh6 okay procedure i will show you a tip how to write procedures okay then preferential issue they have given 621 c when you issue now this is read with rule number 3 preferential issue is a issue of shares to any selected group of persons on preferential basis you particularly give it to certain people it is preferential issue company already knows in advance to whom they are giving so there are the conditions very very important what are the conditions if i want to privately place it to someone articles of association allow special resolution you have to give all details all the explanatory statements of who are you giving what price you are giving to the individual who is that individual the allotment should be completed within 12 months of the resolution so if today company has said they are privately isko place kar do so within one year it should be given to him okay if within 12 months you have not done then another special resolution will have to be taken now this is important the price of the share shall either be for cash or for consideration other than cash based on the valuation report by the registered valuer so we can give it to him privately place it for cash or for consideration other than cash procedure also i will show you one tip where you can write all the procedures now this is private placement now understand private placement is applicable to all companies which are doing select giving it to a selected group of persons preferential allotment is a term used when you are giving it to listed company when a listed company is giving so that is when it is generally used so if you read the icdr regulation you have preferential allotment to selected groups private placement is what when again just like same like preferential allotment your company gives the securities to a selected group of persons company people know in advance to whom it is allotting private placement come offer come application now what is this we have to give a offer letter letter of offer to them then they will subscribe so the company may make a private placement of securities a company may making a private placement issue private placement offer an application form now when i am privately placing now again this is important the number of people to whom you are allotting so maximum number of people that you are doing is 50 at a time 200 in a year and while cal calculating 50 200 qib and employees are not to be counted see a private placement shall only be made to a selected group of person whose number shall not exceed 50 in a year and 200 at a time excluding uh, in a year so 50 at a time 200 in a year excluding so while calculating 50 200 exclude qibs and employees okay now again applying to private placement every identified person willing to subscribe so if you go to see reliance industries has privately placed to mark zuckerberg so mark zuckerberg ko privately place kiya at a certain price so shall apply at private placement uh, they are, this is the mode of payment time limit 
for allotment so we are done that time limit for allotment so we have to allot within 60 days if you don't allot so once the resolution is passed the time limit for allotment and payment of interest a company making a offer of invitation shall allot its securities within 60 days from the date of receipt of the application money very 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 important practically what happens today agar maine privately place kiya usne mujhe paise de diye ठीक है ऑफर लेटर साइन हो गया पैसे अकाउंट में हिट हो गए विद इन सिक्सटी डेज अलॉटमेंट कंप्लीट हो जाना चाहिए विद इन सिक्सटी डेज हैव टू गिव द अलॉटमेंट अदरवाइज रिफंड विद इंटरेस्ट वॉट एवर सब्सक्रिप्शन मनी वी गेट इट विल बी केप्ट इन अ सेपरेट बैंक अकाउंट एप्लीकेशन मनी वॉट दे गिव विल बी कोट इन अ सेपरेट अकाउंट इट कैन बी यूज दैट मनी कैन बी यूज ओनली फॉर टू पर्पज इधर गिविंग अलॉटिंग द शेयर फ्रॉम दैट मनी वी से दिस मनी हैज बीन यूज टू अलॉट और टू रिफंड return of allotment will be in pas3 now pas5 is the letter of a uh, uh, register to be maintained ps3 is the return of allotment correct clear to you so we did section number 621 abc then when 61 c we were doing we also did section number 42 private placement now we'll be doing bonus shares which is number 63 supremely simple section it has three subsections first subsection is saying first of all bonus shares means what issuing shares at for free is very general we'll call it as capitalization of reserve means reserves se paisa nikal ke share capital mein dal diya so shareholders ko zyada paisa mil gaya kyunki company ne hi reserve se paisa nikala hai so bonus shares is the meaning is capitalization of reserves the provisions of bonus shares are contained under section number 63 63 subsection 1 subsection 2 and subsection 3 subsection 1 says from where you can issue for bonus shares so for bonus shares paise kahan se aayenge common sense hai reserves or you remember we had read section 52 subsection 2 where you can use the security premium account you can use it here and from your capital redemption reserve account so from this money we can use to give bonus shares now to issue bonus shares article should allow board of resolu- uh, board of directors and uh, ordinary resolution has to be passed company should not have defaulted and their partly paid shares should be made fully paid up shares so no default partly paid shares fully paid up karo uh, article should allow and ordinary resolution <coughs> now a very important in the past exam question also they had asked this question they had asked no bonus share shall be uh, issued in lieu of dividend means if the company has promised bonus shares so they have to give bonus shares if the company has promised promised cash dividend then they have to give cash dividend cash dividend ke badle mein bonus share nahi de sakte and vice versa so whatever the company has promised then they cannot give you something different so no bonus shares in lieu in dividend ke badle mein bonus le lo nahi aisa nahi chalta hai bonus shares shall not be issued in lieu of dividend section 63 subsection e procedure i will show you a common procedure sweat equity shares section 62 subsection 88 defines what is sweat equity shares when a company issues equity shares to its employees for consideration other than cash or for providing certain techno uh, for technical know how or for value addition by whatever name called is called as sweat equity sweat equity hota kya hai equity shares de rahe for getting ipr intellectual property rights so we are issuing equity shares and we are not going to get cash we are going to get consideration other than cash then section 54 gives you the conditions for issue of sweat equity very very important 
so section 2 sub section 88 and now we are reading section 54 54 says special resolution should be taken second uh, if you are a listed company then you have to follow sebi there is different uh, rules for uh, this follow sebi guidelines and a company whose shares are not listed have to comply with unlisted companies will follow with companies act only listed companies will follow this here you have to give a details of the resolution explanatory statement again all the validity of the resolution resolution has been passed today within 12 months you have to allot so the resolution is valid company says ki yaar ye employee ko de do sweat equity pe equity shares de do so resolution aaj pass kiya to uski validity hoti hai 12 months within that you have to allot otherwise fresh resolution has to be taken limit on the issue number of sweat equity shares that you can issue in a year can anyone put in the chat box because it is important it is come in the past exam question also what is it uh, how much sweat equity can be issued in a year in a time etc in lifetime so answer is very simple 15% and 25% so in a year 25% in a year 15% and entire lifetime at any point of time not more than 25% so the company shall not issue more than 15% of the existing paid up equity share capital or 5 crores whichever is higher the issuance of sweat equity shall not exceed 25% at any point of time so 25% se jyada aisa nahi ke abhi 25% allow kiya to next time bhi 25% next time bhi 25% very very good 15% of 5 crores whichever is higher valuation report needs to be taken from a valuer now this is a very interesting past exam question which I want to take you to to the past exam question whether sweat equity shares will form a part of managerial remuneration whether sweat equity shares will be forming a part of uh, Managerial remuneration, yes or no? Put in the chat box. Past exam question, I have one. I want to know from you whether it is allowed or not. So, the answer is it sweat equity shares shall be treated as part of managerial conditions if the following conditions are fulfilled. So, hoga conditions apply, hai. kabhi hoga. Agar ek director ko hum log de rahe, because all this managerial remuneration applies to director and managers. So if you are giving to them and if we have issued equity shares to them or unki taraf se koi bhi intellectual property in the form of asset nahi aaya hai. So they have given some know-how but it is not that great that we put in the asset side. If we will be treated as we are paying for some know-how, technical know-how, etc. The, they are issued for consideration other than cash and it does not form a part of the asset into the balance sheet. Normally what happens, IPR is there. Now IPR is in the form of a wholesome software will go into the asset side. But if I just give you a know-how, so that is just not a, it's not an asset. So if it is not an asset and you're giving it to directors, then it will be part as of your managerial remuneration okay it will be formed in the board report also and you have to maintain a re register in sh3 now coming to share capital buyback and reduction of share capital this is a sure short exam question sure short exam question sure short exam question so three things we will be doing alteration buyback and reduction of share capital let's start firstly alteration of share capital alteration of share capital is given in your section number 61 now 61 says that a limited company if so authorized by the articles alter its egm Alteration means what to bring a change in the share capital. Kuch to change likha, you bought a change. 
now this change could be by increase or you have consolidated your shares or you have subdivided your shares means 10 rupees ke tumne you had you had 10 shares 10 shares of uh, 10 each okay this was the money so your total value was how much value was if your 10 shares of 10 each your, your value was 100 now what is company doing they are consolidating this so what you will have only one share now but it will be of 100 so your value will be the same but what company did from your 10 shares they merged it consolidated combined it this is called as consolidation agar ulta karte ek share ke 10 part kar dete first you had one share of 100 now we split it into 10 parts from here we go so it is subdivision this is consolidation so if you consolidate the share capital may change to one subdivision or convert your shares into stock so we know stock is a bundle of shares so instead of one share you had 100 shares now you just wanted this 100 shares ka ek certificate aa jaye jumbo share certificate or a stock certificate so then it is your shares into stock your and lastly cancel shares which nobody has taken up has not been taken up so section 61 Subsection 1, sub clause A, B, C, D, E talks about alteration. This is how you change. Now, section 64, 64 says that agar boss inform to karna padega na ROC ko ke that you made an alteration. So, in SH7, whenever you made an alteration in the share capital, you will inform the ROC. Till here it is clear. Whenever you've done this alteration, you will inform the ROC in SH7. So alteration finished. Now we are doing buyback. Buyback. What is the normal meaning of buyback? When the company purchases its own shares, it is called as buyback. Buyback sometimes company does whenever a uh, buyback. Whenever the com company does, it is when they feel that there is a takeover threat. Take over the company. So, you shares to take your shares back because they will sell them to They will sell it to someone better. You will not buy it. Sometimes to improve the capital structure, earning per share, you do a buyback. So, these are the benefits of buyback. Now, starting with the provisions of buyback. Now, buyback provisions are contained under section 68, 69 and 70. For drafting in company law, 5 mark drafting is compulsory going to come. Okay. I have made a video already on drafting. Just put company law, dra uh, drafting in company law, CS executive on YouTube. You will get the entire video. Okay. There I have covered all the possible drafts that come and I have come in your exam. Okay. Now coming to buyback. Buyback section 68 talks about the conditions for buyback. So certain terms and conditions are given as the conditions for buyback. 69 talks about transfer to CRR, capital redemption reserve. So whatever amount you are buying back, whatever amount you are uh, going to buy back the shares, that much amount will be transferred into capital redemption reserve. And section number 70 talks about prohibition of buyback. So Whenever the, you have made a default, buyback cannot be done. Buyback cannot be done through a subsidiary investment company. So these are all the points. Let's go to the sources of buyback first. Now we're doing section 61, then subsection 2, and then 2 has many sub points. First, paise kaan se aayenge buyback ke? Quickly put, buyback kare means company is buying back the share, so they will have to give the money. Paise kaan se aayega? So money will come from free reserve, security premium or proceeds of any other specified issue. So if I'm buying back equity shares, so proceeds of preference shares can be used to buy back equity. So proceeds of another issue, kisi or issue ka paisa can be used to pay off your. Next, authorization. Articles of association should authorize quantum. Very, very, very important. Quantum. So it's a exam question also. Quantum or buyback. So wait a minute. 
take a pause i am going to explain something important quantum of buyback theek hai exam mein bhi aata hai so we are going to see <coughs> quantum of buyback of buyback sums come your sums aate hai idhar so we have to know let's see the so it's something like this the board can authorize up to a limit up to a limit company can authorize up to a limit okay so we'll see how much the board of directors can authorize buyback and how much the company can authorize a buyback so board of directors can authorize 10% of the paid up equity share capital plus pre reserves so the board of directors can buy back 10% of paid up equity share capital plus pre reserves is this clear how much can the company buy back so the shareholders by a special resolution can buy back 25% of the to total paid up equity nahi diya hai total paid up capital means equity and preference plus free reserves so 25% of total paid up capital plus free reserves this they have given when i say paid up capital means it includes equity and it includes preference shares also okay so company gets a much higher limit and third however in any financial year the reserve of 25% with respect to the paid up equity capital in respect in respect of buyback of equity shares in any financial year the reserve of 25% shall be construed with respect to 25% paid up equity capital very very simple i'll explain now they have given one more point subject to 25% of paid up equity capital Now let's understand this quantum very very well. Okay, so listen to me. If I tell you that the company has paid up preference shareholders of ten crores, equity shareholders of twenty crores, free reserves of thirty crores, can you all compute and tell me how much is the board authorized to uh, to buy back? Calculator, take it out, please. Or tell me. how much can the they do the buyback so it is paid up equity capital so i will take this and this ka 10% so how much they can do buyback 5 crores ab iska batao 25% of paid up capital so now paid up equity and paid up preference so 30 plus 30 to so 60 so 60 crores ka 25% how much is it 15 crores so it will be how much 15 crores clear till you this is how much the board can buy back now pay attention to what i want to say okay very very important come board of company can buy back 15 crore right to 15 crore ka equity uda do kya 25 ye 20 crore mein se 15 crore equity uda deta hu So they say no, no. You have 15 crores, but always remember, you want you can buy back entirely preference. You can buy back 100% preference. You can buy back, but when it comes to equity in a year, you can buy back only 25% equity. So though the company got a limit of 15 crores, but that 15 crores cannot be used to buy back equity shares. Equity shares' ka limit is 25% max in a year. so that means balance i can do of preference preference can be bought back 100% clear till here 25% is this okay now this is there now moving forward they are giving you more conditions now uh dispatch the letter of offer period of offer for of buyback so it will remain 15 to 30 days 
post buyback debt equity ratio should not exceed 2 is to 1 so this is debt this is equity it shouldn't be more than that then uh, the share should have been fully paid up time gap between two buybacks should be uh, no buyback shall be made within a period of one year so one buyback ho gaya abhi shanti se baito next buyback will be done after one year time limit for completion so complete the buyback within one year methods of buyback you can buy back from the open market you can buy back from the shareholders only or you can buy back from the employees declaration of solvency now when you are doing the buyback company has to make the payment so it shouldn't happen that unka paisa khatam ho gaya they in sh9 they will have to say that they are going to be solvent for at least one year extinguishment of securities within 7 days so whichever securities has been bought back their share certificates you will physically destroy within 7 days from the date of completion of buyback prohibition of further issue of shares now you bought back now again don't issue for 6 months for 6 months company cannot make a further issue except by way of bonus ye sab kar sakte bonus issue this all can be done warrant stock options this can be done rest you cannot issue register of buyback will be maintained in sh10 return of buyback is the details of the buyback will be given in sh11 and a signature sign of the two directors including the manager certificate that it has been completed certificate of compliance will be in sh15 which will be annexed to the return in sh11 okay now whatever money has been bought back it will be given to the crr capital redemption reserve circumstances prohibiting buyback section 70 cannot do a buyback through its subsidiary investment company cannot amount to uh, cannot do a buyback if it, there is a default in the repayment of deposits interest there on however the buyback is not prohibited if the default is rectified and a period of 3 years has lapsed from the default ceasing to subsist clear till here so we are done with this also but just remember in buyback there are forms sh8 9 10 11 and 15 sh8 is letter of offer Le uh, lesson this is declaration of solvency then is your register of buyback then is your return of buyback return of buyback and this with this return will come a, a certificate of compliance that you complied with all the company law provision so this is with respect to buyback market is important take a screenshot you can fit it in your exam now come into the next part reduction of share capital now reduction of share capital means reduction of the issued subscribed and paid up capital of the company ab kya hota hai ye aur iske kya provisions hai let me explain now we are doing section number 66 we are doing section 66 that's your reduction of share capital now reduction means what शेयर कैपिटल इंक्रीज हो रहा है तो पीपल विल बी वेरी हैप्पी बिकॉज द कैपिटल इज इंक्रीजिंग बट वेन एवर द कैपिटल रिड्यूसेज और श्रिंक्स इट बिकम वेरी वेरी स्ट्रेसफुल फॉर द क्रेडिटर्स फॉर एवरीबडी सो देर फोर देर आर वेरी स्ट्रिक्ट रूल्स विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू रिडक्शन ऑफ शेयर कैपिटल ओके नाउ बिफोर आई टेल दिस लेट मी एक्सप्लेन अस लिटिल स्मॉल कॉन्सेप्ट यू ओके so again wait back relax i'm saying something important now red a uh, reduction reduction of share capital it can be without approval of tribunal of nclt or it will be with approval of nclt this without approval of nclt is called as diminution of share capital in this the capital reduces but it is considered theek hai yaar samajhte hota hai it is a normal thing understandable 
you do not require nclt approval so in the exam they have asked write a short note on diminution of share capital so we'll see what all comes under diminution of share capital you can note it down with me uh, buyback forfeiture they'll give you redemption of preference shares okay a uh, surrender all these things come under diminution of share capital uh shares which have not been taken up okay which have not been taken up by anyone so in all these cases you don't require approval of nclt it is called as diminution of share capital however whenever we use reduction of share capital we always talk about this section 66 till here it is clear reduction of share capital when we say we normally mean section 66 which require nclt approval so what are the criteria for this first special resolution is to be taken second nclt approval is to be taken and third articles of associations uh, should also provide for reduction of share capital in this we will see what are the modes of reduction of share capital how do you reduce your share capital first so let's see let's go through the module only special resolution and confirmation by nclt now the modes of reduction of share capital is given here imagine you had to pay me money you had to pay me now in all these things you require nclt special resolution nclt approval nca uh, this and articles if i extinct the word is cop cop if i extinguish the liability extinguish liability of anyone you had to pay me 300 i said nahi chahiye it's okay i don't want keep it so don't you think my capital is reduction there is a company who is so what happens why they keep nclt because nclt will ask creditors today company was supposed to get so much money that is why they must have got a bank loan today companies saying we don't want so then the creditors will say hello your credit worthiness will reduce tumhara paas paisa nahi rahega tum repay kaise karoge so creditors approval come in that is why nclt is involved where they see that there is no dispute extinguish kar diya liability na mat bharo don't give next pay off excess capital pay off excess capital imagine you have already paid i give refund to you so automatically my uh, my capital will go down next so we finished payment pay off excess capital extinguished liability c cancel shares cancel uh, those shares which are not represented by available assets means imagine if my asset side pe building thi wo gir gayi imagine there was machinery that uh, was stolen so if all the data is there i thought ki they are my assets as but data was vijay malia neeram modi bhag gaye to wo to paisa nahi aane wala hai to asset side ko mereko reduce karna padega because that is a asset which is now no longer available it has been written off राइट ऑफ करना पड़ेगा दे रैन अवे नाउ यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू गेट सो इफ आई रिड्यूस ऑन द एसेट साइड फ्रॉम द लाइबिलिटी साइड आल्सो हैव टू रिमूव समथिंग तो शेयर कैपिटल कम कर दो शेयर होल्डर्स को बोलो सॉरी दैट एसेट इज नो लोंगर अवेलेबल क्लियर टिल योर सो यू हैव एक्सटिंग्विश द लाइबिलिटी ओके रिड्यूस द लाइबिलिटी कैंसिल द शेयर्स व्हिच आर लॉस्ट और नॉट रिप्रेजेंटेड लॉस्ट or is unrepresented by available assets and pay off the excess share capital so first is you pay off second is you uh, it is not available the assets are now lost chori ho gaye kharab ho gaye etc or you have extinguished someone's or reduced the liability so cop you can remember cancel o is any other method or a combination of them C O P is pay off, E is extinguish. 
then again when you go to the tribunal the tribunal will inform now when you go to nclt that we want to reduce our share capital then nclt will inform all the uh, people they will tell the registrar they will tell the central government pure mall name mein bata denge they will tell the creditors they will tell sebi that see they are doing do you have any objection come and object then after hearing both the parties they will confirm the reduction order and a publication will be done uh, you have to comply with the accounting standards now whatever is the order of the tribunal that has to be informed to the registrar also that is it okay now coming to diminution of share capital the diminution of share capital is not a reduction as per section 66 it does not involve in court approval so diminution of share capital they have given you you can diminish and does not require approval of court so i told you whenever we use reduction of share capital it is with approval of the court so it's under 66 Diminution of share capital does not require it reduces your share capital but does not require approval of court. Redemption of preference shares, buyback. Uh, this is when the court has ordered to purchase back the shares, etc. By uh, there is four feature. Redemption of preference shares, buyback, surrender. All these things will come here. In all these cases, procedure of reduction as laid down under 66 will not be attracted okay reduction without sanction of court i told you surrender forfeiture so they have asked this in the exam also so you have to remember surrender forfeiture uh, you know all those things are given now coming to the last part for this chapter biggest chapter last part transfer transmission so they are saying that for private company transfer is restricted and for public company it is uh, freely transferable transmission so we'll see the difference between transfer transmission that is what they ask you directly from your whenever you are transferring then sh4 is a share transfer form sh4 this is given under your section 56 sub section 1 SH4 is your share transfer deed, share transfer deed. Okay, this has to be signed by both the parties and delivered to the company within 60 days. Within 60 days, so this part is important. Then directly come to this part, which comes in the exam. Which is the difference between transfer transmission all the others are not important but we can just i'll tell you the provision section 58 if your transfer has been refused you will go and appeal to the nclt nclt after hearing and pass a order within 10 days you have to listen if a uh, in the register of members now 59 we are doing so 56 57 is different is not here 57 58 and 59 58 is about refusal to transfer you go in appeal rectification rectification is if uh, your name has been wrongly entered wrongly removed you can apply to nclt to uh, rectify the register of members uh, tribunal will order that within 10 days the rectification should be completed and the company has to follow then in this transmission also we'll see now one table is there which has come multiple times in the exam so this is very 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 important difference between transfer transmission transfer is a voluntary transfer when both the parties are alive you have to execute a share transfer form share deed transfer deed which is in sh4 uh it is generally made for consideration transmission is and transfer by operation of law when there is a death insolvency etc no instrument of transfer is needed because the person is already dead so you will not have a transfer deed here you do not require stamp duty your stamp duty is needed okay transmission is without consideration no stamp duty and uh, shares continue to be subject to the original liabilities 
so this important was there the difference differentiation now again you can mark important as forged transfer forged means what when the signatures are forged so forgery is impersonation of anyone so we'll just see a forged transfer so they've directly said so whenever the signature of the transferer is forged what will happen what is the legal position so cho ki maine tumhara ghar tumhara ghar pe tumhara signature forge kar diya aur bech diya to kya hoga will you so if i you know take make a false i sign on your behalf and i sell your house so will will you still remain as the owner yes or no so answer is you will still remain as the owner because a forged transfer is a nullity it does not affect the transfer so the i will still continue to be the owner now question is i i made a fake signature and i sold it to someone so that someone made the payment so if the company has registered a forged transfer maine nahi dekh paya signature aur maine i transferred it to a bona fide buyer i i gave it to a innocent person i did not know you like a criminal came with a fake signature and told that sell it to this one and i sold it that guy was innocent so in that case the company has to rectify and then indemnify and then they can take it from the wrong doer so company has to first rectify so let's read this a forged transfer is a nullity the original owner continues to be the shareholder of the company and the company is bound to restore his name on the register this is given in a peoples versus wood and company very very important it can never move the um, ownership to another person we understood that now however if the company issues a share certificate to the transferee you now company did not know by mistake transferer say transferee ko de diya it was a fake certificate i did not know i thought it is a transferer signing but transferer ke sign nahi thi kisi aur ki thi aur maine transferee ko de diya buyer ko de diya he sells it and that guy sells it to an innocent buyer then the company is liable to compensate then the company who has been put to loss will have a right to recover the damages from that fraudster okay this depository system is not that important i'll just give you one short form how do you remember depository and pledging okay? so i'll give you very simple see a uh, year you have a investor now investor today if he wants to hold shares in electronic form so we have depositories so depository is an organization that hold shares in electronic form okay so if you want to hold your dmat share so the investor will have to go to a dp depository participant and then the dp will open with the depository the depository that is your cdsl and your nsdl till here it is clear so this is the mechanism so the investor will give a form dematerialization request form to the dp the dp will give it to the depository the depository will give it to the company and companies either have mostly they have a separate or body separate intermediary only to handle the share transfer which is your share transfer agents rts registrar and share transfer agent so investor gives the form dmat form to dp depository participant the depository will give it to depository the depository participant will give it to nsdl cdsl they will contact to the company's rts and that's how it will go so just remember that the drf form goes in this order now after dmat you realize you don't want to go on online you want to make it back so you will again have to make a request you will make a rematerialization request form rf you will give it to dp dp will give it to depository depository will give it to you till here it is clear and that is it we are done with the chapter now these are your resolutions how to draft five marks compulsorily it will come in your exam 
I have already made a video on uh, this. So please be in our WhatsApp and our uh, Telegram group. I have given it in the description and also in that uh, chat box it is there. I will share that again. Full video I have made on how to draft. Once and for all that will get done. So sometimes they also ask for 10 marks drafting. So please be aware of that. So I am done with the chapter 3. Okay. Now uh, just go into the sections which had come in chapter number 2. So in chapter 2 and let's see the exam questions of chapter 2. I will go fast. So this is your exam questions. Reduction of share capital and diminution of share capital. Please tell me the section for reduction. Put it in your chat box. What is the section for reduction of share capital? Section number 66. Very good. Now they have given you this case. They have asked twice. In this what they have done. Reality is limited. And five other individuals have incorporated this company. So this company and five others have incorporated this XYZ builders to construct a commercial complex. Uh, realtors and this have executed an agreement that none of these companies can sell their shares in the new company before the completion of the construction. So, sub shareholders have said that we will not sell our shares. We all have come together and we have said we will not sell the shares. Due to financial crunch, this reality decided to sell its shares. Agreement we I don't care I'm selling the shares. Can this con can the shareholders restrain this person from transferring the shares? Yes or no? What do you think? Exam question. Hai. Last attempt. Ka. Can I block you from transferring? So then the answer was as per section 2 subsection 68. Remember public company. It is said. No. Section 2 subsection 68 is for private company. Section 2 subsection 71 is for public company. So this is a public company. Public company shares are freely transferable. So even if you keep a contract like this, the company law will prevail. That private agreement baad mein chakda karna. But this you cannot stop the person from selling the shares because company law says that it is freely transferable. So this is what they have said. A public company shares are freely transferable and no restriction can be imposed on the rights of the members during the transfer. Now coming to your last attempt questions about this uh, chapter number 2. Amount lying in the security premium account belongs to the shareholders and can be used freely for their benefit. Security premium account with section number section 52. Subsection 2 says only at these 5 places it can be used and no other place. Then comes a situational question. Santosh CEO has advised the board of directors of an unlisted company that you know that in order to market the public issue and generate awareness among the public a prospectus can be issued without giving the details of the number and the issue price. So can I ever issue a prospectus which doesn't have the quantum of issue and the price? Answer is yes. We are talking about red earring prospectus section number 32. Now they have given you this case. Monica wants to purchase its own shares of 5 lakh equity shares of this much each, each uh, 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 arising out of unsecured loans, fee reserves and security premium. Uh, examine the legality of the statement for the buyback complying the provision. So first at least write the section that you can do a buyback only from free reserve security premium and proceeds of another issue. So in the given case she can purchase this out of free reserves and security premium but cannot do a buyback from the unsecured loan that she has done it will be a contravention of section number 68 till here it is clear we saw one of the, uh, the sources of buyback you only free reserve security premium proceeds of another issue this is not an issue this is a loan you cannot do that it's not mentioned then they have given you us uh, assume the facts prepare a board resolution 
so i have given the format please uh, you know check it be in the telegram group i'll share you how to do it then coming to your december 2021 question uh, the board of directors of akash a limited company in its meeting held on xyz date announced a proposal for issue of bonus shares to all the equity shares at this much 1 is to 1 The directors at another meeting passed a resolution to reserve the proposal of bonus shares on this day. Discuss the validity of the resolution. Now this is the December 2021 question. क्या बोल रहे हैं लोग? That the board of directors of Akash Limited, a listed company, on 1st April announced a proposal to issue the bonus shares. Now. Uh, on may 1st so april may next month the directors passed another resolution to reverse the proposal reverse kar sakte hai can i reverse it yes or no and which section is saying that you cannot reverse so once bonus shares have been issued it has to be given you cannot reverse that situation okay so once it an announces you it becomes a debt on the company the co they have to give in terms of section 63 subsection 2 no company shall capitalize its profit unless a recommendation has been given uh as per the rule 14 a company which has once announced the decision of its board meeting recommending a bonus share shall not subsequently withdraw the same in view of the above provision the board of directors shall announce this thing and later cannot subsequently reverse his decision hence the first board resolution shall be valid but the second board resolution for reversal shall not be valid clear till here so that is it we are done all the questions of the past exam question with respect to chapter number 2 now we we'll start with chapter number 3 that is your members and your shareholders now before we start we'll take a break of around we'll start in a certain time okay so we'll take a break and we'll finish so we'll start at Nine fifteen is five, and we'll finish this chapter. We'll chapter. Let's see how much marks does it have in the examination. So we finished important chapters. Yeah. So we finished the grade A chapter. which is of this much marks then now we'll also finish your grade this chapter which is of 10 marks approximately so this will be done the directors chapter i have already made a video on the directors chapter just put chapter 16 directors my video will pop up for directors chapter okay so go ahead do that even for general meetings you can do that i have uh, made it unlisted as of now i made it public so you just have to google search go, sorry go on youtube and search for directors put the chapter name cs executive put jangir tutorials you will get it for directors also you will get for general meetings also you will get clear so I, so that way i will be able to finish more part even your kmp i'll make it because i want you all to clear okay so go ahead do that we'll finish off after the break this chapter and do join the telegram group uh, as well okay and inform your friends also so that more people sit okay so we'll take a break and we start so this will be it then we'll finish it off okay and inform your friends It's more fun to have more people watching okay so we take a break have a dinner and all that and come back okay thank you so much i'll see you all at 9:15 
Hi guys, am I audible to you all? Drafting, I have already put up a, a video on that. Please be in the Telegram and the WhatsApp group. I'll post it again. Or you can just uh, YouTube search also drafting in company law CS executor. My video will be there. You can watch it from there. Okay. So I'll quickly start and finish it. Okay. So now I will be increasing the pace. I will be going only to the part which comes to the uh, in the exam and give you the markings as well. So good to go. Can we start? I just wanted to put in the chat box. Okay. So let's start quickly. Now we'll be starting with the chapter members and shareholders. Now the first question are all members shareholders and are all shareholders members? Are they one and the same? Answer is yes. Once you buy a share, you become a member of the company. Your name gets reg registered in the register of members and you can start now attending the meeting. However, there is a time gap sometimes where members are not shareholders and shareholders are not members at some time. For example, if I have just bought the share, I have just bought the share that time I will be a shareholder but till my name is not put up in the register of members I will not be a member. Second if I similarly if I have just sold a share, shares I have just sold a shares so I am not a shareholder but I will still be a member. Similarly if a person has become a, a person has uh, there is a death of a person so a dead person cannot hold a shares so he is no longer a shareholder but his name will still be there in the register in the books of uh, in the register of books in the register of members so this during these times a register and member might not be the same so this is what they given you members and shareholders are the same interchangeably used answer is yes but sometimes they are not the same so there could be exceptions since i've just bought i am a shareholder but Time lagta hai mera naam aane ko, so I will not be a member. If a person has died, he is not a shareholder, but till his name is removed, he will be a member. So on quickly moving to the definition of member. So this is important. You have to remember from the exam point of view. Please note it down in your book. Section two, subsection fifty-five. The definition of a mem member. A member is now there is a practical exam question also that has been come. All subscribers to the member. Are deemed to be the members of the company. All subscribers are deemed to be any person who agrees in writing. So sometimes you agree in writing, you uh, write a letter, etc. You do a share, or uh, share transfer form you execute. As it's four, so you become a member. And third, if you are holding electronic form where your name is mentioned in the depository, you are a member. You will be called as a beneficial owner. So in these three cases, you become a member. Now let me take you to the exam question which had come from this. Okay, so this is the exam question on basis of this on this chapter. So correct. In this, what happened? It was written Sun Sumit, Puneet, and Manmeet. Now this is the exam question. Subscribe to the MOA. So moment they subscribe to the MOA, automatically they are deemed to be the members, and they are bound to buy. And they in in that they are told that they will purchase 500, 300, and 200 shares. Sumit and Puneet, like good boys, they purchased. However, this guy Manmeet, he did not purchase from the company. He bought it from this guy only, Manmeet. He bought it from Sumit. So the question is, is it okay? Answer is no. All the people have to buy from the company. They are deemed to be the members and they have to subscribe to the share. He cannot buy from an individual separately. So in case of a subscriber, no application or allotment is needed. By virtue of subscribing to the MOA, he becomes deemed to be the member of the company. And according to section 10, subsection 2, all the money payable by any member 
for subscribing becomes a debt due from him to the company so it's like a debt the company can recover from him and it is like a promise that he has to make in the instant case he has not absolved from the liability he is not relieved aisa nahi ke nahi chalega if he is purchased from sumit he has to purchase from the company it is his statutory obligation to buy from the company okay so this has been framed from section 2 sub section 55 moving ahead to this the same thing they call it as modes of membership modes of acquiring membership again they repeat section 2 sub section 55 by subscribers are deemed if you are holding your shares in de depository demat form you are a deemed member and third by agreeing in writing now how you can agree in writing transfer form bhara usne transmission legal representative filing so transmission can also come here deceased person ke liye you are doing then next by signing uh, if you fill up the ipo form allotment you go and subscribe you will become there and by estoppel estoppel is if you if a person portrays or represents himself to be the member of the company and induces others to invest in the company he shall be deemed to be the member for the purpose of the liabilities okay so again they just repeat the same thing this chapter looks big but it's very much same transfer transmission this and member who may become a member very very simple uh, a company it's a artificial legal person it can become a member answer is yes in section number 19 okay now this is going little bit technical a holding company buys the shares of subsidiary the subsidiary cannot buy shares of its holding company given in section number 19 a subsidiary cannot buy shares of the holding company in two cases if it is holding as a trustee theek hai legal representative someone has died the holding it's fine partnership form can it hold shares answer is no doesn't have separate legal existence partners themselves can do it llp it has separate legal existence it can become a member section number 8 company yes obviously they can buy shares foreigners obviously they can buy shares not a problem minor minors can buy under the name of a guardian okay so so one of the reasons for entering into the co contract for subscribing you should be liable to enter into contract and contract says that the minor cannot enter into contract because we don't want to put any liability on the minor a fully paid shares a minor can hold this but if there is any shares on which the minor will have liability he cannot hold the shares so partly paid shares he cannot fully paid shares he can insolvent member can he be a member till his name is there he will be a member so we have seen anil ambani till his name is removed he will become huf as a member so huf does not have separate legal existence karta can hold not the huf pony now who is pony so have you heard of pledge when movable property security rate share certificate you keep a, and take a loan so you are a pledge it's a pledge the one who is giving his security keeping as security and taking a loan keeping it as certificate security is called as a pledger pledger or we can say pawner just for the sake of it to whom he is giving is the pledge or we can call it as pony so agar maine shares girvi kiya theek hai so it is me here so i have pledged the shares so i have pledged it but i will only be the member of the company but day i default maine default kar diya tab wo ja ke bech denge they will go and sell it then when on default and his name is put then he will become the owner till the entire default is done and then this is done the pledger will only be the owner receiver court receiver etc till it is sold he will he can become society if it has separate legal existence it's fine a person taking names in fictitious names again there is penalty for it trade unions if it has separate legal existence it uh, they can hold clarification regarding status of a uh, gdr whether gdr uh, i am holding global depository receipts 
so your foreigners when they subscribe to uh, when we buy shares of google apple we will get adr gdr okay if there is an american company we get adr if european company we get gdr etc so do i become a shareholder answer is no till my name is not put gdr holders do not get so this is what they are saying not important but still so till you don't get in the name it's not there joint members up till four joint members can be done however the notice will be given only to one whose names are put first nominee as a joint member so you can nominate to a person who will be entitled to the shares minimum number of members very very simple private company 2 one person company 1 public company 7 now cessation of membership very very important it's a past exam question also how do you cease to be a member common sense i sell it off i die i uh, you know transfer transmission surrender forfeiture winding up of company court has ordered all these cases it will uh, be the striking of company was struck down etc so in all these cases i will cease i will no longer be a member expulsion of member can a Member be expelled from the company. Expelled means remove. Class se nikal dete na how we remove from the class. Get out, remain. Do a noise. Get out. Can we do that to a member? Answer is absolutely not. The board of directors putting a clause in the articles that they have a right to expel a member is void. It has been held in Nargis Pirodia. There is a very important case. You should know that that. provision to expel a member from the articles is void okay if you want to remove go to the court court will take the board of directors cannot take such powers in their hand a controversy has been put to rest whether you can insert a clause in the articles to expel a member the department of this clarified that an article for expulsion of a member is opposed the fundamentals of company jurisprudence means to put an article to remove a member is against company jurisprudence matlab company ke law ke against hai register of members very very simple write this section section 88 talks about register of member sub section 1 says that you have to maintain register of uh, members shareholders basically debenture holders also you have to maintain and other security holders this is one then you a very very important section is about foreign register foreign register so a register now companies have global presence they can have been in europe they can be in uh, usa you know they can be in asia and multiple places so they can be there so it's a foreign register so what are the provisions also that a company can maintain a foreign register and we'll see uh, it will come rule 7 etc it will come i'll come uh, come to it and it, that is important also okay so just till we before we come place of keeping the registers where do you keep all these register of members obviously you keep it at the company's registered office but if you want to keep it at a place at another place then you can pass a special resolution and you can do it but it should be at a place where at least one tenth of the members reside section number 94 place of keeping this register of members uh required to maintain i did not understand please repeat what you did not understand can you please message what you didn't understand so place of register of members where do you keep this register of members so this registers whichever are given in section number 988 you will keep it at the registered office this is the first point second if you want to shift it from the registered office to another place then you can keep it at such other place in india in which at least 1/10th of the total number of members रिसाइड कम से कम दस टका लोग वहां पर रहने चाहिए देन ओनली इट इज ओके या नाउ फॉरन रजिस्टर इज गोइंग टू कम अड सो दैट इज वाई नॉट एक्सप्लेन 
year. Okay, happy year. Very very important. Maintenance of foreign register also. Now what happens? Companies nowadays have global presence. Let's say our company is also there in in uh, in USA. So if we want, we can have a separate register out of India. We will have a separate register out of India, which will contain details of only people in that country. Any new entry will be there. It will be put up a replica. A second a register should also be maintained here. A replica should be maintained here. It should be open for inspection. Any entry that you make there within, I think, 15 days, you have to make an entry here. And moment the, reg the foreign register is created, it has to be informed to the ROC in 30 days. So let's read section here. So in MGT one, you will make a register of members. Register of members. In MGT two, you will maintain of other security holders. Other security. Holders. This is of shareholders. And in MGT three, you will maintain a foreign register. In MGT three, you will maintain a foreign register. So let's read. A company, if it is authorized by the articles, can keep in any country outside India a part of the register of members. Okay. A resident in that country, the company shall within 30 days of opening a foreign register, जो भी उस country में है, उनके सबके नाम लिखे होने चाहिए, वो वहाँ पे foreign register है, it will be considered to be a part of the principal register, यहाँ का register वो एक ही बात होगा, खाली separate maintain किया है, शायद the foreign register shall deem to be a part of the register, you the foreign register shall be maintained in the same format as a principal register. The company shall transmit to its registered office every entry in any foreign register within 15 days. So any entry done there within 15 days immediately we'll do it in India also. Closing of register of members very very important. So remember three dates: 45 days, 30 days, and uh, seven days. So we have to close the register of book uh, the books to know to whom to give the corporate benefits. So closing of close of books has to be done. Company has to know to whom the corporate benefits have to be given. For that they close the books. On that day, whoever is appearing, whoever names are appearing on the register of members will be entitled to the corporate benefits. So section forty ninety one says that in a maximum in a year you can close the register or. Uh, Of members for 45 days in a year, 30 days in a in one time, and seven days prior advertisement has to be done in a English, Hindi, and uh, regional language. Okay, then comes declaration by a person who is holding not holding any beneficial interest. So section 89 is there now. It will come here down again. Okay. Here we did MGT one two three. Now we'll do five six seven. MGT four five six. Okay. Understand? क्या है? There are two people involved. One is a registered owner, and the other one is a beneficial owner. There are two people involved: registered owner and beneficial owner. So let's say if I am uh, going abroad, so I tell and I have lot of money. तो मैंने क्या किया मैंने शेयर्स खरीदे आई बॉट द शेयर्स एंड आई सेड दैट सी आई कैन कम इन इंडिया एवरी टाइम सो आई विल पुट द नेम ऑफ माय ब्रदर सो माय ब्रदर इज द रजिस्टर्ड ओनर इन द बुक्स इट विल बी रिटन दैट ही इज द ओनर बट ही इज होल्डिंग फॉर माय बेनिफिट सो आई एम द बेनिफिशियल ओनर सो दिस काइंड ऑफ थिंग आई हैव टू इन्फॉर्म टू द कंपनी सो द रजिस्टर्ड ओनर विल इन्फॉर्म इन एमजीटी 4 विद इन 30 डेज From the date of which his name is entered, that he is a registered owner, but does not have any beneficial ownership. वो उसके benefit के लिए नहीं है किसी और के benefit के लिए. Thirty days के अंदर बता देगा company को. 
the beneficial owner will also have to give within 30 days tell that see his name is there but it is in my benefit it is for my benefit so that also has to be given so both will inform to the company then the company in mgt6 will inform to the roc see the company on receiving from mgt4 and 5 will inform to the roc within 30 days then comes section number 19 b uh, significant beneficial owners so nowadays what happens we want to know that who is the main owner of the company biggest shareholder of the company okay so what we have done is provide that every individual every individual who either acting alone you are alone or through one or more person you or a trust including a trust and a person resident outside India if you hold beneficial interest of at least 25% of such this as may be prescribed shall make a declaration in SBO1 in a beneficial Ben1 you have to inform his specifying the nature of the interest of his transaction ok so law may likha 20 5 percent or such other percentage as may be prescribed so government is 10 percent the hour let's read okay slowly significant beneficial owner the government is empowered to prescribe the threshold limit so then here they have given you the threshold limit so who so this is important can come in your exam okay so this i feel it is uh, will come in your exam just a sec So, what is a significant beneficial owner? A significant beneficial owner as per the threshold in the section 90 they have said 25% but the government has a discretion to set. So, the government has set these limits. So, but there. In relation to a reporting company means an individual. So, so me an individual who acting alone or through persons trust possess one or more following entitlements in the reporting namely first holds holds easy holds uh, direct indirectly or together with any direct holding at least 10% of the shares or as 10% of the voting rights or as who gets 10% of the dividends so who is a SBO in directly or indirectly if a person is getting 10% uh, shares 10% voting rights and 10% dividend so he is a SBO till your definition is clear Ab, again they have given the graphical form also significant beneficial owner means means a uh, someone who is holding 10% shares 10% voting rights or 10% dividend okay let me put this on just close the doors which are easy hmm. okay now let's see they've given one example also just to understand that s holds directly 10% equity in a understand directly or indirectly if you are holding 10% shares voting rights or dividend you are a SBO so S holds 10% of equity in A and he, and he holds 55% in H which holds 1% in A so what is happening there is there is there is okay so there is this guy s he holds in a limited he holds 10 percent okay he holds 10 percent and this s is holding and he holds 55 percent 
55% in H limited and H limited is holding 1% here. So can I say that he is exceeding 10%? So since he has 11%, so he is having how much? 11%. He is a significant owner since he holds 11% directly or indirectly. Even this if you see, S holds 8%, S holds 8% in A limited di directly. S is also the karta of HUF which holds 7% in A. So S is there, S holds in A. A limited how much 8% S is also the S is also the karta of a HUF now this is a HUF and this HUF is holding 7% and S is karta so again indirectly 15% stake so he is since S holds 8% directly and through this indirectly is holding 7% he is a Significant beneficial owner since he holds 15%. Uh, okay, now if you go to see the forms, very simple forms are given. Every reporting company shall take necessary steps to find out if there is an individual who has significant ownership there, defined under Rule 2H of significant beneficial owner rules in relation to that reporting company. And identify such person and cause such individual to make a declaration in Ben 1. So the individual makes information in Ben 1. Ben 2 is for what? Return of significant. Now this will always be filed by the company. So uh, the reporting company shall file in Ben 2. So individual files here. Company files Ben 2 telling that who all was holding more than 10% shares in their company. Okay. Consequences of non-reporting, obviously there is penalties set. So you can read this part. Now, uh, one simple little section is about nomination. So nomination is basically uh, on the death of the shareholder to whom it will vest. So it's a nomination. Section number 72, you have SH13, which uh, gives the nomination form, nomination form. And if you want to change it, it is in SH14. It is a change in nominee, in nominee. Change the name of the nominee, then you can do that in SH14. Quickly moving ahead to something that has come in the exam. Shareholders democracy. Market is important. Okay, it can come in your exam. So I'll tell you this concept in short very easily. Nowadays what happens when people are investing in the company. There is a company and they are investing. The investors are going to be the shareholders. So the investors who are pumping money, they say, listen, we want more rights. I'm pumping in 20 crores in the company. I'm pumping in 5 crores. So share purchase agreement banega, ek shareholders agreement banega. Share SHA bolte. SHA banega. Investors make a SHA agreement and tell the current investor, see, I'm going to give you 5 crores, provided you make me the director, provided you inform me, provided you promise me this, give me these rights, etc. So when the shareholders among themselves make an agreement, it is called as shareholders agreement. Okay. Sometimes when newer investors come in, this is important. So when new investors come in, they don't want to take, they don't know, in the company there must be uh, you know unity etc and they will be at disadvantage they will be minority so they say i'll pump in money but give me these rights so those rights are put up in the shareholders agreement this is very common in business in india shareholders agreement have gained lot of popularity okay uh, there is a mutual understanding among the shareholders to which the company generally becomes a consenting party so the shareholders everyone and, the, and they incorporate in the articles. So whatever agreement has been done between the shareholders, that is put up in the article. That's what they said in the enforceability of the enforceability of the shareholders agreement. So what happened 
in till supreme court it went whether shareholders might agree anything so is it enforceable or not enforceable so first thing is if shareholders agree to anything which is ultra vires of the company law it is invalid it is void so normally what they are saying though the international view is split we will directly go to the main provision what they have said here the supreme court in rangarajan versus gopal krishnan held that a restriction which is not specified in the articles whatever the shareholders have decided has to be incorporated in the articles then it becomes binding आर्टिकल्स में लिख तो अमेंड होता है आर्टिकल्स एंड दे इनकॉपरेट ऑल दोज प्रोविजन इज नॉट बाइंडिंग इधर ऑन द कंपनी ऑर द शेयर होल्डर इज द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट क्लियर दैट इफ एनी अग्रीमेंट यू कैन मेक टिल यू डोंट पुट इट इन द आर्टिकल्स इट इज नॉट बाइंडिंग ऑन द कंपनी सो इट इज ओनली बाइंडिंग वेन इट हैज बीन इनकॉर्पोरेटेड इन द आर्टिकल्स ओके and obviously anything that you try to uh, you know do anything which is against the company law you will not be valid in this context while the landmark judgment of rangarajan case is above is cited the decision of the shareholders agreement are not uniformly inclined the high court decisions are limited okay so simply putting it up that the shareholders agreement uh, are enforceable moment they have put into the articles of association and as long as they do not violate any of the laws nor the memorandum now going to the veto powers sometimes i have seen myself in shareholders ask for veto rights that i am pumping in 5 crores but tomorrow you cannot merge without my consent if i say no so you cannot merge you cannot change the line of business without my consent i have a veto you cannot change the object without my consent i have a veto so veto is a power which you can say i forbid and even if all the shareholders have agreed but if you have the that shareholder that investor has that uh, right veto he can exercise this okay so this is also common a veto may be given a power only to stop changes thus allowing its holder to protect the current status quo you can read it once that's it so we are done with this chapter chapter number 3 as well okay now i will go a little more fast now to uh, another chapter now before i go and before you all go off to sleep let me put up one thing the the sections we will write sections in this and i want you to write it in your module now charges is section 77 to 87 but the most important is 77 82 and 87 so 77 is basically registration of charges 82 is satisfaction of charge 77 is modification and uh, registration of charge 82 is satisfaction of charge and 87 is condemnation of delay agar time pe nahi file kiya so you can get a extension remember this now distribution of dividend etc is 123 to 127 is distribution of profits dividend okay so write this at least if you can't write the direct section at least you write this section number the this entire thing <coughs> now 123 to 127 the directly on account chapter is section 128 to 138 this is about accounts okay this is about dividend this is about accounts uh audit comes from section 139 to section 148 this is about audit okay so you write these points at least next when we come here inter corporate loans is section 186 inter corporate loans your related party transaction is section 188 188 write down in the books now registers we just saw section number 88 
talks about register different kinds of registers to be maintained okay then uh csr now corporate social responsibility i believe you will know this csr is section 135 okay your debt capital and deposits deposits are from section number 73 to section number 76a okay write it down now debt capital is about debentures debentures is very very simple only one section section number 71 is about debentures now share capital is on members also we did okay we did this members shareholders now uh for members okay so you can remember at least in members you can remember section 2 subsection 55 which gives the definition of members remember the modes of acquiring memberships etc this all is there and i think uh, this i have made you right so this is a screenshot you can take of this i believe you can see or no i don't know so take a screenshot of this you can write at least these many sections now what i plan to do is go a little fast on certain chapters you remember this chapter loans and investments by companies it is your which is the loans and investments by companies uh can you all message which chapter lesson may i have this here lesson 10 control f lesson 10 okay so now i am doing this chapter now we will starting with lesson number 10 very very simple and easy chapter the this chapter has two parts one is loans inter corporate loans now inter corporate loans is so simple so simple it has only one section and one form section number 186 talks about inter corporate loan and to maintain a register for inter corporate loans is in mbp 2 this is a form number okay and related party transaction is your section number 188 till here it is clear so these sections you can quote let me take you quickly through the provisions okay now section number 186 sub section 1 says that a company can have maximum two layers of investment company like won't be explaining too much i'll just be telling you a company can have maximum two subsidiaries which will be its investment companies however two exceptions are there so today a company can have unlimited subsidiaries but when it is becomes a in, but when we are talking about investment company only two investment companies so two investment companies can only be there no company can have more than that one second investment companies ke exceptions are when you can have more than two one is if there is any legal requirement to hold so you can open and go to your book that into that specific provision finish it if there is any requirement of law to have more than uh, two then it is different wo hoga tab dekhenge and if you have acquired a foreign company which already has more than two investment company then it is okay section 186 sub section 1 clear sub section 2 gives you the limit gives you the limit that how much you can hold so no company uh, what is the name of the chapter loans and investments by company how much loan can a company give how much investment can a company make so no so upper limit de diya no company shall give any loan guarantee or invest in the security of any other body corporate exceeding 60% of the paid up capital plus pre reserve plus security premium or 100% of pre reserve plus security premium account whichever is higher ab ye limit de diya hai ki bhai isse zyada mat karna agar isse zyada karna hai koi bolega nahi humne karna hi hai to section 186 sub section 
says if you want to do then pass a special resolution subsection 4 says that also make the disclosures of what are you doing who you are giving what is the purpose etc subsection 5 says that in all these cases you require consent of all the directors unanimous approval of the directors are needed under section 186 every time in addition to that usse jyada agar at any point of time you have to also take approval of a public financial institution which has lended money to you also approval of pfi is needed if you have exceeded the limit given under subsection 2 or you have defaulted on the loan to bhai jinne hame loan diya humko pooch lena poochna padega ki bhai chalega kya hum log limit ke exceed investment karna chahte hain loan dena chahte hain etc subsection 6 says that no, not important but sebi will have its own guidelines uh, shall not take loans in excess of the limit specified by sebi 7 subsection 7 says that the rate abhi jab hum log loan de rahe to rate hoga rate of interest the rate of interest shall not be below the bank rate the company when they are giving a loan they shouldn't have made a default themselves register of this will be maintained in uh, mbp 2 10 may it is will be open for inspection 11 uh, there are exceptions when this will not apply so ex exemption from the provision of section 186 so banking company so those who are in the business of giving loans for them this provision will not apply because unka kaam hai wo to karenge banks financial institutions nbfcs uh, investment companies right issue under right issue if you are subscribing so that investment you can do uh, in government in defense etc so in all these cases they can do now and also remember the uh, free reserves when they say free reserves when they say what do you mean by free reserves so pnl general reserve revenue reserve sinking fund when there is no debentures and dividend equivalent the equalization reserve these are all free reserves okay now coming to this uh, if you want to see whether we know it or no let's go to this take a screenshot of this take a screenshot of this this is your entire section 186 to maximum two layers of investment companies limit has been given to you subsection 3 and limit ke upar jana hai take a special resolution disclosure has to be given uh, pfi uh, approval has to be taken if you have uh, defaulted or going exceed ex, uh, exceeding the limit uh, sebi have intermediaries will have to follow what sebi said uh, interest rate will be closer to the bank rate uh, mbp2 is given for the uh, maintenance of a register inspection is there under inspection of that register mbp2 is your 11 is exemptions uh, exemption for all those companies central government can make additional rules and penalty now this is section 186 187 which is not important says that when investments are not held in its own name normally any investment you do your name will come so normally investments should be held in your own name but if investments are not held in its own name they've given you exception you will maintain a separate register in mbp3 see here okay so this part is not important 186 187 wala investments uh, not held in own name company should invest in its own name first obviously you should hold invest in its own name but if it is not in its own name then uh, mbb3 maintain a register now coming to most important and you are going to see this in your examination take it from me mark it important read it whatever read it with me only now related party transaction now section 186 read with rule number 15 remember that write it in your books I am not telling you to write anything else except the rule number, section number, revise karne mein easy hoga. Okay. Now related party transaction kya hota hai? A transaction with a related party is called as related party transaction. Uh, who is a relative is given under section 2 subsection 77. Who is a related party is given under section 2 subsection 78. Difference kya hai? Related party is a wider term. Related party could be your... Uh, 
relative could be a related party but also a company in which you are a director a firm in which you are a partner even that can be a related party now whenever doing transactions with related party they have given you this provision kyunki bhai kuch to gadbad ho sakta hai to sabse pehle let's see section 188 subsection 1 says with approval of the board with approval of the board see this is the uh, part okay this is it short mein summary mein kya hai bhai kya hai ye related party transaction if it is within the limit board resolution finish auditors committee will always check it out but related party transaction if given within the limit under rule number 15 then board resolution is sufficient but if it is exceeding the limits given under section rule number 15 wo kya hai tum pad lena for each individually that is important usme se khali ek hi office for profit 2.5 lakh wala wo important hai ordinary resolution is needed every time the uh, audit committee in every single thing will check they will give a omnibus approval omnibus is a blanket approval for common transaction acha theek hai ye to routine related party transaction hai wo de denge but the uh, approval cannot be for any amount which is greater than 1 cr up to 1 cr you can give omnibus approval clear anywhere if you feel that you are not getting please message me now this is the uh, part where they say how do they frame it related party ke sath mein kya karoge tum tell me what do you plan to do with the related party so you will buy goods you will avail services you can buy property you can lease assets you can appoint them as your agent you can keep them as a underwriter or you can appoint them as office of profit now what is office of profit 2.5 lakh rupees limit diya hai uh, you give them a post in your company if in my company is there and i realize my younger brother is there i will give him a post of a director now this if you are doing in a public company obviously you are using the money of public so in all these cases if you are giving up till the limit specified in rule number 15 board resolution above the limit ordinary resolution clear till you rule number 15 remember that now when a re related party is there related party is there he shall not vote in the meeting obviously he is not allowed to attend also exception in private company it is okay in government company it is okay and if 90% of the members are related family business hai to tum kiske sath mein bhi relative ke sath mein hi karoge so then it is exam so just read that disclosures whatever related party is done will be given to everyone in aoc to related party transaction okay audit committee has to check every single related party transaction placed before it they can give a blanket approval for transaction but the transaction value cannot be more than 1 cr okay related party is defined under section rule uh, section 2 sub section 76 in uh, relative is defined under section 2 sub section 77 and also related party is defined under uh, lodr regulations also regulation number 21 zb defines relative related party and uh, 21 zc define what is related party transaction so mention this in your exam also and also regulation number 23 of the uh, lodr states about related party transaction policies related to related party should be there all related party transaction audit committee will check and omnibus approval up till 1 cr can be given now once that is done so we're done with this chapter okay loans and investments <clears throat> okay so now we'll go to the next chapter quickly i'll tell you also now let me see which simple little chapter we can pick up so i'm done with this chapter also related party transaction next uh, registers which one do you want me to take nahi i will not private the video i'm not that bad don't worry आपके लिए है दिस वीडियो इज फॉर यू टू पास ओके आई विल नॉट डू ऑल दिस क्रैक थिंग्स नाउ कमिंग टू दिस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ प्रॉफिट्स एंड डिविडेंड ओके क्विकली लेट मी सी ऑफ द प्रोविजन 
for disclosures wala chapter karna hai okay so lesson number 9 we are doing <coughs> uh lesson number 9 is transparency and disclosure quickly quickly we'll finish it off lesson 9 फिर एक एक दूसरा छोटा कर लेता पहले सॉरी वो कौन सा बोर्ड कमेटी वाला सीन कमेटीज ऑफ द बोर्ड घड़ी घड़ी आते रहते जस्ट फिनिश नाइन ऑन ओके नाउ कमिंग टू दिस ट्रांसपेरेंसी एंड डिस्क्लोजर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर वेरी वेरी स्कोरिंग चैप्टर वॉट एवर इज देयर ऑन द स्क्रीन यू हैव टू टेक अ स्क्रीन शॉट एंड राइट एंड डाउन विथली विथली विथ मी ओके ठीक है सो ट्रांसपेरेंसी इज नीडेड अ कंपनी मस्ट प्रोवाइड इंफॉर्मेशन टू ऑल इट स्टेक होल्डर्स गवर्नमेंट पब्लिक एवरी वन इंफॉर्मेशन शुड बी एडिक्वेट सफिशियंट क्लियर एंड टाइमली देर आर वेरियस डिस्कलोजर्स कंपनीज हैव टू मेक अंडर लॉ सो द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ एनी क्वेश्चन अबाउट transparency and disclosure you will write the intro that companies must provide information it should be timely adequate clear and uh, sufficient now we'll see where all and what all disclosures are given the very first disclosure that we do to the shareholders which gives them knowledge is about annual return very very important i don't know whether you, you have done it or no go to that it is 110% coming in your exam uh, uh, annual return section number 92 now annual return will be in mgt 7 uh, return for annual return format for opc and small company it will be in mgt 7a okay now when so uh, the annual return contains all the information about the company and uh, the financials about the company the certain provisions whether they have complied or no so that is one thing the format is given 92 subsection 1 subsection 2 says that for larger companies you have to get certified by a company secretary so company secretary will certify so uh, if it is a listed company or it is a company having a paid up capital of 10 crores or more or turnover of 50 crores or more then in such case the annual return has to be certified from a practicing company secretary the extracts of the annual return the highlights will be given to everyone in mgt 9 so remember 7 8 9 789 annual return format when pcs of uh, uh, certification and extract of this will be given okay now this is about annual return the second thing is the most important whole and soul board report if you just see what all information is to be given in the board report what is a board report a board report is a report by the board of directors to the shareholders telling them or uh, informing them updating them apprising them about the events that have uh, occurred in the company and whatever chapters you remember you will write that first issue of the security that has been done payment of dividend appointment of kmp secretary audit now you will write a little bit global also about renewable energy foreign outgo how much was there what all the company was done whether auditor has given some comment so you can just read through what all information is to be given a uh, mdr management discussion analysis report was done or no issue of security so whatever chapters you have you to write uh, now securities may you will write what the information about uh, sweat equity or uh, dvr esop this is all information that we are giving to the shareholders in our board report then committees of the board supremely important firstly csr committee section 135 2% of the average 3 years net profit has to be given for the purpose of social welfare as given under schedule 7 schedule 7 of csr if you just go you will come to know they have given a schedule where all you can give a new addition has been done in the amendment where they said that for covid relief what is there you can also give so a company today who has to distribute a cs who has csr funds they can plan to give it in the pm cares as well so they are giving you schedule number 7 to eradicate hunger etc you can do that a company has to make a policy they have to tell whether they will uh, distribute this uh, the first csr committee will be made or comprising of directors 
these directors will make a policy of and the amount that they have to distribute is 2% of the average 3 years net profit okay they will distribute that uh, they can either distribute by themselves by creating a company section 8 company or by giving it to an existing company uh, this whatever funding they have done has to be put up in the board report under section 135 or uh, 134 uh, is about board report so that also has to be involved in that then uh, coming to audit committee audit committee section 130 170 now i'm saying i'm going to show you something else also here so i okay now this is lodr provisions also So in SEBI LODR, your regulation number 6 says appoint a compliance officer, appoint a compliance officer which is a company secretary. So every single listed company has to appoint a company secretary as its compliance officer, that's regulation number 6. Now remember 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 you can quote in your exam 110% it is coming. You can note it down okay now and I'll show you a technique to remember also. So remember this code word, remember this code word, answer A, answer risk. So or, sec, uh, regulation number 18, so 17 remember, Satra Madna Katra is board of directors, its composition etc. 17A, mark this and it has come multiple times in the exam. The maximum number of directorship uh, they can hold. I don't know whether you are uh, noting it down. Regulation number 17A is going to come in your examination. It is going to come in your examination. Is the maximum number of directorship they can hold. After 17, then remember 18, 19, 20, 21. 18 is audit committee, nomination, remuneration committee, stakeholders grievance committee, and risk management committee. It is same like how in Companies Act also you have audit committee 177. NRC committee nomination is 188, 178 and uh, stakeholders grievance committee is se section 178 subsection 5. Clear to you? Now this is there and obviously the details has to be put up on the posh website uh, on the company website as well. Now coming to accounts chapter. Accounts chapter I told you all it is from section number 128 to section number 130, uh, 128 to section 138 okay accounts accounts will be uh, the consolidated accounts will be in KOC 1 related party transaction will be in uh, 2 and this filing of financial statements with the ROC will be in AOC 4 AOC 4 is important now consolidated financial statement will be in AOC 4 CFS that is important so these are all the details with respect to information so just if you think so much information we are giving to the stakeholders annual return information uh, then the annual return format also has to be given then board report etc on the website so when i go to lesson number nine okay let me see lesson nine so here when i go just quickly brush up to le lesson number nine so annual report very 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 important okay section number 92 okay it starts from yeah so you will give all this information etc now let me go to another chapter and quickly tell you which one from here i think if you all need any chapter please message i will check i'll read it up okay one we've also finished at the same time we finished the board reports chapter also this is your committees of the board which chapter we are doing now committees of the board lesson number 18 okay so if i go to lesson 18 we are doing committees of the board and the regulation number we just did i think you can do it with me now only see which all committees are to be maintained in this okay this is meetings of the board 
global trends okay so this meeting of the board is very very simple the sections also they have given you see uh, the board of directors shall have four meetings and the time gap between uh, should be 120 days for a uh, small company it is half yearly they will hold this uh, this meeting of the board can be done even through audio visual ways that is given under rule number 3 rule number 4 says what cannot be done as per uh, video conferencing so then you have this uh, board report they have given you amalgamation prospectus so you can check those up rule number 3 and 4 rule 3 and 4 now when i talk uh, now uh, section 174 talks about the quorum what is the quorum of a board meeting it is one third or two whichever is higher okay now uh, this section 175 passing of uh, resolution by circulation so what is resolution by circulation have you heard of postal ballot abhi everyone can come at the meeting so we send them by post and take their voting now that postal ballot is for shareholders when the same thing you do for directors all the necessary papers you circulate to the people and ask the shareholders or ask the directors to give their voting and send it back to the company and then on basis of the accounts the resolution will board resolution will be passed so this is passing of the resolution by circulation however if the directors one third of them uh, so we go back to section 175 so if they write in to the chairman so if they write to the chairman that it should not be run through board resolution uh, to the circulation and a actual physical board meeting should be called so physical board meeting will be called so a uh, company may pass a company may pass a resolution through circulation no resolution shall be deemed to have been passed unless you have given them all the uh, necessary papers to pass a decision now if must be passed through majority of the uh, directors however one third of them if they complain to the chairman that it should be put through a normal meeting then it will be called as a normal meeting only okay now uh, we go up again to the other thing which is there yeah minutes of the meeting should be maintained at the registered office it is available for inspection thing you can read on minutes of the meeting quorum of the meeting is same as uh, this this you can mark as important quorum just read it prior intimation so regulation number 19 regulation number 29 and 30 is about giving intimation to the stock exchange of the transaction that you are doing now uh, this was about meeting of the board then if i go to another chapter so board committees this is at yeah so just remember this table also okay nrc a uh, audit committee nomination remuneration committee stakeholders grievance committee and a uh, risk management committee risk management committee is not there in company law but if there are thousand or more uh, the top thousand companies listed companies have to have a risk management committee earlier the limit was 500 now if i go to disclosure also we are done now let's go to the dividend particular top let me go to okay now we going to the dividend chapter and we'll finish that as well okay now control a now dividend is with chapter number lesson number 6 control a lesson 6 okay so now we will be starting with the distribution of profits and dividend i want you to take a book and pen keep writing with me continuously okay now let's see 
Firstly, dividend means distribution of profit. The definition of dividend is given under section 2, subsection 35, which says dividend includes interim dividend. It means that all the provisions of dividend also apply to interim dividend. Now, the provisions are contained under chapter number 8, sections 123 to 127, companies dividend and uh, payment, companies declaration payment of dividend and SS3. SS1 is for board meeting, SS2 is for general meeting, SS3 is for dividends. Okay, now understand that dividend can be of two kinds, interim and final. Interim dividend is, uh, is declared between two AGMs and final dividend is declared at the AGM. Okay, so between two AGMs is in the board meeting, number of times you can have n number of times interim dividend. However, final dividend is declared at the AGM. So therefore, it can be done only once in a year. Now, can the dividend once declared be revoked? Answer is no. Dividend once declared becomes a debt to the company. They have to repay to the company within 30 days. However, there are certain exceptions where the dividend can be chosen not to be given if consent of all the directors or shareholders have been taken, if uh, there is a sudden tax liability or there is a contingent liability as materialized. Now, if you just go and try to, I'll show you a technique where you remember all the sections properly for dividend. Okay. So very first thing it starts with declaration of dividend section 123 talks about declaration of dividend moment the company declares a dividend in the next 30 days it should be paid uh, to the dividend however by the end of the 30 days so section 123 is about declaration if in 30 days it is unpaid or unclaimed then in the next 7 days it has to be transferred to a separate account called as unpaid dividend account that is under section 124. If in this it's there for 7 years then it will be transferred to the IPF account which is under section 125. In IPF is set up by the government, the funds can come in from different sources by grants etc. Utilization can be given for repayment, for litigation, for investor education protection fund etc. Now, moment you declare in the next five days you have to put in a separate bank account and uh, once it goes into unpaid or unclaimed dividend account it has to be put up on the company's website within 90 days so that whoever uh, can go and check then uh, So this in IEPF uh, rules, they are there 2016, IEPF 1 is a form where amount credited to IEPF has to be intimated. How much money was not claimed for 7 years and that goes into the IEPF. So you can check that in, that has to be intimated in IEPF 1. If now suddenly I have got up from my sleep and I want my money, I want my dividend back, so I will file IEPF 2 which is claiming your unpaid or uh, unclaimed dividend then investors claim uh, investors claim will be in uh, 5 in dividend from IPF dividend or share because for 7 years if you have uh, the even the shares are get freezed if you have not uh, you know used any of your rights or claim 7 uh, dividend for 7 consecutive years the shares also get freezed and go into this unpaid uh, IPF which you can claim by filing IPF 5 ok so this is it with respect to dividend so dividend these are the form numbers you should know declaration of dividend 123 unpaid dividend account 124 125 is IPF 126 is whenever there is a dispute on who will get or there is a transfer pending during that time who will you give it so company keeps that dividend in abeyance aside and then once the transfer is complete then it or once the real owner is confirmed then it will be given to them and punishment is given under 127 okay now a uh, di director's chapter i have uh, put it up you can just youtube it you will get it director just put the chapter name cs executive my lecture will pop up when whether it be kmp or this so that is there i have kept it public as of now Okay, so uh, you go ahead and do that. 
and one very very important thing is dividend out of see dividend always has to be given out of the profits either the current year profit or the past year profits past year profits are your reserves so you can even give dividend out of your past year uh, this but there are certain conditions to be followed is bar okay bar rule number 3 is given for declaration of dividend out of past year profits so balance should not fall above a limit they have given you can just check 15% 10% is there then the uh, the amount to be withdrawn they have given and last is the average rate should not be more than uh, average rate of dividend that you are declaring should not be the rate of dividend that you are declaring should not be greater than the average three years uh, rate let me see which one is there okay now this is the account chapter the accounts audit so chapter number 11 section 128 to 138 AOC 1 talks about consolidated financial statement, AOC 2 is about related party transactions, uh, AOC 3 is about salient features, AOC 4 is about financial statements with ROC and AOC 5 is a book of accounts other than registered office. So one is 128 talks about the place of keeping the books of accounts. So books of accounts are okay? registered office. It should be preserved for 8 years. And if you want to keep at a place other than the uh, other than the registered office, then AOC file has to be filed. Now, section 129 talks about the financial statements. So the fine the financial statement should give a true and fair view. Uh, the double entry system should be followed. It should the accounting standard should be followed. Then uh, the console if it has a subsidiary, then the consolidated financial statement has to be filed uh, also filed. Uh, if there is a deviation, you have to explain the reason for the deviation. Now, section 130 talks about reopening of accounts. So, reopening is what? If uh, at all there is a uh, error or a fraud, that time you uh, the NCLT can order for reopening of accounts. Earlier, whenever they used to, before this section, they used to open a suspense account, but they never knew what to do with the suspense account. Section 130 says, if at all the board report or the accounts is not as per uh, law, then they will say to recompute every entry and open the accounts again. So that is your, it's important also, let's go to it. So we are seeing, we are checking section 130. Okay. So reopening of accounts. So what is reopening of accounts? A company shall not reopen their accounts. Means everything, Papa check karenge books. All the entries will be checked again. Shall not reopen the account and shall not recast its financial statements unless an application to the tribunal is made by any one of the following. The seen in the application DI, central government, income tax department, SEBI, all these regulators have made an application to reopen the accounts. The reopening and recasting of financial statements is permitted only for the following reasons. Now, why it was uh, done only for the following reason. If it was made in a fraudulent manner or the affairs of the company were mismanaged, casting a doubt on the reliability of financial statement. That time we'll do. The tribunal gives notice to income tax authority, SEBI, central government. The accounts once re revised here will be final. So, this is good. Now, coming to the next one. Okay, that is Nafra. Nafra is my personal favorite and a chartered accountant's worst nightmare. Nafra is a new body which has been created, okay, which has really uh, diluted the powers of a chartered accountant. Earlier, the chartered ICAI had complete powers for accounting standards, but with the introduction of this new regulatory body, the Nafra can really make recommendations to the central government for forming the accounts and auditing policies. They can monitor the compliance with the accounting standards, monitor and enforce the accounting standards. So imagine with respect to what ICEI used to do, now Nafra is going to do National Financial Reporting Authority. They And this is the worst part. This is why I am telling you it's a chartered accountant's nightmare. 
just for the sake i'm telling you why because nafra is become like a governing body which will oversee the quality of the service of professionals they will check etc but also if you go to look at it government of india is really wanting professionals whether it be company secretaries or uh, chartered accountants to be at their feet they always keep a monitoring body quality review body so that we also don't get very relaxed and we are very much uh, taking care and plus since the scope and the businesses today have expanded so much it is important to have one more dedicated body in it okay so nafra council will have experts in accounting auditing all of this so it's important okay so this is it then if i come forward to uh csr csr 2% of the average net 3 uh, years profit please you should do it or uh, now 137 says copy of the financial statements should be given to the roc in aoc 4 if it is adopted within 30 days of uh, egm if it is not adopted within still within 30 days of egm then when you adopt it in future then again from that you have to inform so when it was adopted in the annual general meeting again you have to inform okay so this was about account chapter i think we are almost done i think this is the last part i'll do it rest all you can just youtube you will get my lecture you will be able to finish it off okay now quickly go into one part what i wanted to show audit Now see registers and returns very very simple lesson number eleven so company must so whenever they ask a question about register and returns lesson number eleven you will write that a company must maintain registers they are called as by law which have been mandatory told them is called as statutory reserve these registers should be kept at the registered office every entry that is being put has to be authenticated by the CS or any other person who the board has authorized this. registers will be open for inspection and it will be preserved for 8 years now if we go to see which all registers are to be maintained then we had just done sweat equity in sh3 uh your employee stock options in sh6 buyback sh10 uh, charges sh7 members sh2 mgt1 uh, debenture holders mgt2 foreign registers mgt3 duplicate registers uh, share certificates are in sh2 loans and investments by companies in mgp2 uh, investments not held in its own name is in mgp3 uh, interested directors and related party transaction register is in mgp4 annual return uh, is in ngt7 listed companies under uh, have to follow the sebi lodr regulations which has given uh, regulation number 9 and regulation number 30 regulation number 9 says you should have a policy for preservation of documents and a proper backup policy recovery policy called as ar archival policy it's regulation number 30 so i think this much is it from my end okay and all of this does part b chapters have made it public you can check it out just youtube where you will get my lectures that's it okay so wish you all all the very best don't worry it's a very simple paper learn how to attempt the situational questions get the drafting chapters please join the telegram and the whatsapp group so i can help you further any difficulty please let me know thank you so much for bearing such a long lecture take care and have a good day
I think it's time for you all to do self study as well. Okay, so go ahead, do your self study, complete all of this. I've completed most of the chapters which I've completed. The main provisions I've covered. I've covered chapter number two properly, which is the main important chapter as well, and all the other highlights as much as one could do. Thank you so much. Good night and have a great day. Thank you.